Howdy, folks, and welcome back to the Nace Star League. It's week six, and we're back for more Counter Strike. And my name is Vincent, and I'm joined here by Cole or Hexter20. And well, you're returning this week, Cole. I'm super excited to have you back. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. I had a nice week off. It was a good vacation, but I'm back and I'm ready for some more Collegiate. I'm super excited for tonight. It's going to be a phenomenal night of Counter Strike. That it will be. We had, you know, some some one-sided affairs last week whilst you were absent. Maybe uh, you'll bring back the uh, the closeness, or <laughs> I'm not too sure. We'll have to see. But let's take a look at the schedule as we get ready to look at things. We're going to have University of Wisconsin-Madison coming up against this Minnesota State University Mercado roster that we watched uh, last week that you were there to miss. That's going to be followed up by Georgia Tech. Um, you know, the old Georgia team going to have to cheer for them as the uh, you know, home and raised Georgia boy myself coming up against Florida Gulf Coast, another team that we've actually had the pleasure of watching already this season on stream. So some returning teams, some brand new teams. That's how we like to do it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is, especially when we get a little bit of information on them. We get to remember what exactly we are looking for in terms of these teams. I'm super excited for that second matchup as well because we get to see more of that, that Florida Gulf Coast roster. That was pretty exciting. I honestly feel like they put up a decent fight against that ISU team yeah. alongside some cool vetoes as well. So I'm definitely excited for that second matchup, but same for the first one as well. That uh, that I am. I mean, we, we have a... a interesting roster i wouldn't want to say coming up here obviously we are somewhat familiar with this minnesota state side of things billy is asian assist struck uh, though i'm gonna say i don't think we saw best carpenter at least that wasn't their name on the server um last time out uh, um and and the minnesotan i believe it might have been stanzel in there um again i'm not 100 percent sure um, but that, that name just jumps out at me. It's maybe a bit of a change or a at least a sub um, on the other side of things. So why don't you bring me through the Wisconsin roster? Yeah, so I did a bit of research on this Wisconsin roster. And so we've got Zamga, Butter, Eddie Comet, Wavy, EHN as well. And it's a lot of names on this roster are pretty strong here. But the, for the most part, the main heavy hitters that we're going to be looking for in this University of Wisconsin team is Zamga and EHN because those two have been top of the charts pretty consistently. There's something to look forward to in those two names, but it, it's going to be a rather tough fight. I think that Minnesota, they can put up a bit of a better fight here because both of these teams, they'd say, are inching towards even. You know, maybe we'll, we'll get a third map out of this best of three. Yeah, well, whilst these teams you say might be inching towards even, well, their scores or records certainly are not. It's four to one here for Wisconsin Madison, whilst it's three and two for Minnesota State. An unfortunate look um, there. We 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 saw the loss to the Redbirds, like you were talking about um, uh, earlier, on, or rather, not the Redbirds. My apologies. Last week, uh, it was the Indiana. Oh, the Redbirds, mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a one-sided affair there, two and oh, uh, quick and easy. That being said, I think against a team like Wisconsin, this could be a very different matchup. If you had to edge someone, though, who do you think has the advantage overall in this matchup? So I feel like it's going to be a rough couple of weeks here for Minnesota, just considering the fact that it would kind of give a slight favor to University of Wisconsin. It's going to be a close matchup versus these two teams, but I'd have to say that overall Wisconsin are going to have the edge just slightly, maybe. But uh, I would be it would be nice to see Minnesota kind of pull off a win after a rough week and their their prior week as well. 
Yeah, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the two maps that uh, we saw this uh, Minnesota team lose on last week. That's Inferno and Mirage. Mirage being the pick that Minnesota went with. And as we edge our way towards our own pick ban today, I got to wonder, you know, is that going to be coming back? Is Mirage going to be the pick that they stick with or do they try to go somewhere else? We're ready to take a look, though, and see if Minnesota has made any sorts of other decisions. Unfortunately, as you and I know, Ancient and Vertigo are always the first to go. Mm -hmm. It's going to be followed by an overpass pick here by Wisconsin. And oh, Minnesota goodness. taking Inferno. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's the three maps. Overpass, Inferno, Mirage. Have we seen anything other I than don't these? I do think so. We've seen Vertigo once. That's yes. it. That's the only other thing we've seen. I can't believe it. If you're just tuning in here to the Nace Star League, you haven't been watching us all the way through. Well, first of all, drop us a follow because it's definitely worth taking a look at every single week. That being said, we have uh, yet to get Dust, Nuke, or Ancient at all this entire uh, this, this entire season thus far. So anyway, take us through. What are your thoughts here, Cole? Just let me know. So I was highly expecting at least Overpass to be played. I was highly expecting Inferno to be played. Mirage was the only question mark. I wasn't sure if we were going to see that. But yeah, it is interesting to see how Collegiate leans towards these three maps in a fashion that I've never seen. Last season, we had the 2-0 the curse every single broadcast. <laughs> this season, we've got the Mirage, Overpass, Inferno combination. And maybe that's a little bit of a credit to the fact that Dust2 had some changes that people yeah. aren't really playing that map all that often because of the new, you know, you can't peek through mid anymore. But also, like, Ancient and Vertigo. Yeah, and we saw Vertigo once, but Ancient, we haven't seen that yet. Teams aren't quite adapting to that, that map, it seems. And then... You know, it is a bummer that we're not getting a lot of nuke. But I, and as for these three maps, I think that it's just going to keep in favor for University of Wisconsin. I think that they're going to really like these vetoes, considering the fact that they're comfortable on all three of these maps and not only comfortable, but they feel confident. Yeah, and, and it's sort of one of those scenarios where the better teams are going to always be better on maps like this, mm -hmm. particularly Overpass at Inferno. I think you could kind of find an upset, I think, on Mirage, but it, it's hard. Fighting mm -hmm. upsets on Overpass and Inferno, if your utility is not on point, you have to essentially be maybe twice as good individually in order to be a good team that has good util on those maps. So um, it makes it quite difficult to overcome. With that being said, we are uh, looking forward to uh, predictions. Let's talk wh what we're expecting. I'm, I'm like you a little bit here, Cole. I, unfortunately for Minnesota, Unless we see them do something different than I saw last week, mm -hmm. I just think that Wisconsin have a little bit better squad put together. That said, I don't want to I don't want to say it's impossible, but I think this is more than likely going to be um, Wisconsin taking it 2-0. I'd give that the the old like 70-30 chance. Yeah, right there with you. I'm not confident that this is going to be a 2-0, but I feel like it, it's pretty likely here. Minnesota, they you know no slouches on Inferno, but I don't think that's going to be enough considering the fact, like you mentioned, that overpass is a rather strong pick. That one should handedly go in favor of Wisconsin, just judging from one of their most uh, favorited maps. And then on top of that, you know, uh, Inferno is their second most played map mm -hmm. as well. So uh, that that fact alone kind of does lead me to that, that exact same, you know, kind of feel like it's going to be a 2-0 here, very likely. But if Minnesota could pull off an upset on a map, I feel like that's an accomplishment. If they can take the series, that would be huge for the record overall. Yeah, I think if, if somehow Minnesota can, can yoink Inferno out of the hands of Wisconsin, that is their pick. Um, but like you said, Wisconsin very good at it. Then there's a chance over on Mirage. But but without that map three, I, I just struggle to see whether or not Minnesota can pull it over the edge as we're looking to get into game here. We're going to get started on towards the overpass as we're into the pistol round here. Minnesota on the CT side. And it's going to be Wisconsin starting on the tees. There we go. Exciting stuff here as we're going to see a slow take of connector at the moment here. It's going to be met with zero aggression. They did send one player in the form of Best Carpenter to peek forward and towards Fountain. He's kind of gone for that information, but didn't spot anything. So they're going to commit to this 4B setup here. And that might be the wrong read, considering the fact that 
There's a, even drawn attention. Butter finds the opener. That could be a disaster here in the opening round for Minnesota. And it could with a nice uh, opening there towards A. Can he get one more? That P250 is deadly and the shots hit their mark. It's just a ding though when Asian Assist is going to trade out. Get it close by on his jump up position. It's going to be difficult trying to push forward through this and deal with Eddie. A double swing, but he's got two himself. Huge frags there from Eddie. And the help comes through as well. Three players left alive. One versus three, considering it's all on Asian assist. And he's taking shots, but is it going to be enough? I don't think so. In fact, not going to happen. EHN with the final frag. Solid stuff. You'll take that one. It was a really nice opener. I mean, this is what cracked it all open. Butter with an nasty find onto the player playing over divider here and just too much map control taken too early that's really nice as well from eddie comet making matters worse there for minnesota state so we're entering into a full force by we got a lot of five sevens a lot of eagles being put in play here for minnesota state but that right there that sort of round from university of wisconsin is a nice statement to kick off their map pick yeah no no doubt about it definitely what you want to see you can see that Minnesota purchased back in here. It's going to be the Deagles in five sevens. And that's going to go against one AK, two Gleals, and two Mac 10s. Most of these players not really fully committed in towards A. They're actually almost all towards B. One player rotating around and two in connector. Depends on the timing here, but Sam could get caught out depending. So he's going to survive for now with the site wide open as they should get the plant down relatively shortly, Cole. And I was watching connector flank at the moment, so that's going to be a worrying factor here for University of Wisconsin. we got to get control of that. We're going to see Wavy try and do so, but already a kill on the flank. Wavy's able to transfer for a second, though, and that makes things so much more difficult. Minnesota State falling apart at the seams in this force buy, and well, four live is the way they're going to finish things out. Asian assistant is able to take one down. A couple of low HP bars as well, and... He's got a good gun in his hands to try and get some cash in his pocket, but he can't even escape. Eddie Comet finds that finishing frag right there. And University of Wisconsin move on to two with a rather easy, in terms of just gathering map control, anti-eco. Yeah, and and listen, they they had the good read, didn't they, Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. They they knew, or rather didn't know, but they, they went to the right direction. There wasn't anybody home over a day. Minnesota sort of stacked the wrong area. They could have had a lot more value. They had found some better timing or gone to the right side, but they didn't. So here we go again. It's going to be the, one of those quick B rushes by the looks of it. It's only going to do some damage there to the close by player. He's a full eco for the defense. And, well, those Mac 10s tearing apart the side to open three players quickly dispatching them. Look at easy right now. University of Wisconsin really just checking all the boxes in this anti-eco, which is nice to see. You'd like to see them gather a bit of economy here on the T side. It could be pretty lethal as butter. He burns in his molly for quite some time, but all in all, Minnesota State at this point are looking to drop a weapon or two. And I don't think they'll even get that here. No, don't do it to him, Sam got. What was that ragdoll? That's brutal. That's quite a bit of extra change in his pockets and Asian assistant, maybe he can drop some butter. Oh my God, he was on four HP. Oh, what a no. D. He hit him in the head there. What more can you do with that 5-7? Like, oh, frustrating. Mm -hmm. Like you said, lots of cash there off that knife. Oh, it's got to be painful for Minnesota. They've got an AWP. That's something that Wisconsin do not have for now. We'll see if Minnesotan can take advantage. Yeah, I mean, a bit of a bonus right here, considering that they've held on to this Mac 10 and two Galil's. Not a lot of reinvestment required, though, when you went around with flawless fashion. And now a fast B play here. They're trying to add a little bit of disrespect on a Minnesota, and for good reason. Opening crack already, but there's good trades back. An Asian assistant gets his sixth kill, and he's looking to make it seven. But he won't find it over towards Cap just yet. And into a 2v3 now. Asian assistant, his position gets a little bit more difficult, but he's still holding on. He does grab seven, and it's wavy right around the corner here. Reload required. He tries it with the USP, but it gets bested in Minnesota. And Vilas looking to close this one out here in the 1v2. It's not going to be easy here. So wavy stalls to get into sight, and the op holds his line as Minnesota finds the frag. What a fantastic hold there from Asian assist. We're going to see it back here once again. 
As uh, entry in and then the double kill coming through. Trucks helping out just for good measure, but the triple on Asian assist to really put Minnesota into that round as they pick up their first. And that EWP going to stay healthy. No op for Wisconsin still, but full AK-47s. And uh, it looks like they might be kind of halfway. No, okay. Looked like they, they might have been faking towards that B rush once again, but you no, know, just gonna be playing a little bit passively. And well, not Zam got he's taking names, taking numbers, and uh, shutting players down as Billy S goes uh, bye bye over in the connector. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on here in terms of the individual's plays. Butter is going to crack open two over towards that B side of things. And I mean, a very quick fall apart for this round. No big deal. It's still early on, but there's a couple worrying factors here for Minnesota that we need to see recovered right away. Asian Assist is trying to hold on for dear life. Good for one frag, but that's going to bail it out. Here's Minnesota. Is capable of a kill, but it's still a 1v3, and I think he wants to hold on to this, but instead of reposition towards heaven, he's going to stick around, but for not much longer, as it will be University of Wisconsin taking a fourth round. But as I was saying, I, I saw one in connector, right? There was, there was a player all by himself no one even close in terms of support there was no real game plan to maybe take water control there's a lot of worrying factors here for minnesota state that i have in the early stages of, the, of this game and maybe that's just a credit to their fact that overpass is going to be a hard match versus a team like wisconsin no i i think i think you make a fair point right you have to set yourself up for success and and we haven't necessarily seen Minnesota do that all that often. A shot oh. from Minnesotan, but unfortunately, it is going to spell his demise. And I think Wisconsin probably are going to be okay with that one gun for the op, all things considered. This is how things got open, and uh, at B, it's a one-two punch. Straighten the math from Wisconsin to Minnesota State. Really quick and easy. As it is going to be back to the pistols, B250s and doigles. <laughs> or Minnesota. I like that. The Doigle? Oh, you man, you yeah. a big fan? All right. oh, I'm all for that. Love the Doigles. Interesting yeah. spin off there. I mean, maybe that's a good name for the fact that the Deagle is now a little bit nerfed here. This is a nice towards Long, but it's only good for a bit of damage here. And now hiding behind that tree. It can't offer you too much cover. The Zeus rolls off as well, but it's no luck. Minnesota goes down and. A very, very quick anti-eco. You can already call it quits at this point. What can you mount in a round like this in 2v5? A kill? I mean, that's the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. Like a kill, something. But even that seems dicey at best. Scrux is the one to look for. And he's in a position to maybe find something. But yeah. Look, some low HP, not, mm -hmm. not really enough to actually contend with. Minnesota. So this is an eco round. What would you like to see from them to get sort of moving into the into the next round? So right now, Asian Assist is the only reason that they have a singular round. That pretty stellar B hold on the first gun round was uh, was super promising, right? But uh, there's not a lot of help. Minnesota has been rather good on the op, but other than that, the three other right flares they got to step up to the plate. They got to start doing some damage. As simple as that. When you have three players on only one kill combined, I mean, that that's a worrying factor here, especially as we're seven rounds in. you got to step it up to the plate just a little bit here for Minnesota State. Not see, uh, that's the real key in terms of gathering some rounds here. That's a fair point. We'll see if they can change it up here, Minnesota State. But, oh, boy, Wisconsin. They're doing it again here, Cole. <laughs> Quick push. Coming out, AWP. Still online for Minnesota. Should he rotate in? But it's a nice swing there. Why, Yeti? Still one player short. Are they going to check that or are they going to get found out? Asian Assist is the one there. He was the hero who got the run round that Minnesota have. Can he be the hero again? That grenade HE going to do a little bit of chip damage, but not too bad. We'll hit the bomb down. It's now four on four for the retake. It's not going to be an easy access point either. They're covering all of the bases at the moment. And you can see Wavy prepared for the flank. Two more around the corner here. Kills are rolling on off. And there is a nice retake to be mounted. Last two are spotted. 1v1 very quickly. Minnesota, he's got his knife out. Picks up the wrong gun there. He's going to be taken down to Wavy's hands here. It's 
enter into a sixth round. It was a nice attempt in that retake, but again, it's still the same. People stepping up to the play. Asian Assist is trying his very hardest. Minnesotan's got some good kills with the Ops. I mean, at least you had a little more defense to be mounted, but the way they took that B bomb site so easily is still very problematic. Yeah, I mean, just a fantastic little entry there. I mean, gorgeous, the take. Um, the player down in the little pit, un unable to do a, a darn thing about it. Mm -hmm. I love that Molly as well. It, it sort of puts everyone on edge, thinking, oh no, this could be another oh, rush. Oh my goodness. This is actually the rush going the other way. One kill not going to go any further. This is Wisconsin. They are down by one, as is Minnesota, but Minnesota recovering an AK. It's a nice AK gathered here, but the util damage that was thrown in and the site that's controlled right now, that A bomb site, is going to be hard dimmed here. I imagine they're going to hold on to that one AK. Maybe not. Maybe showing some signs of wanting to go for this retake, but as Zamka's going to catch one off guard and now make it two, that one should probably call off the AK retreat here. Oh, boost. Uh, all, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you and I both thinking the same things. Uh, oh, okay. Why? And he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The thought process there, I'm not quite sure I'm I'm fully on board with it, but as long as it was a conversation, I guess fair enough. Minnesota, mm -hmm. though, they're down pretty bad. 7-2-1. Now, granted, you got to keep in mind, right? This, this is indeed Wisconsin pick, but this is a map that Minnesota have played. It's not... It's not as if they, they haven't looked at this before. And uh, with that said, we're going to have to start to step things up. This is the CT side here, Cole. They're supposed to be winning. Yeah. Yeah, and it's no question about it there. Again, it, it is a slow start here, to say the least, for Minnesota State. Need some more out of them. B-Rush coming in once again. Best Carpenter all alone here trying to get some nades off, but that seemed to be a little too late. Still not spotted towards the barrels. He's going to take we his first kill that. here. He's going to take his second, and look at that. Asian assist comes by for some assistance on that A or B bomb site, rather. Now Butter, he's all alone. There was no Molly for Barrel, though. That's a great route for Minnesota State. Well, And we've seen the Molly for Barrel come through right. from Wisconsin before. I'm not sure why that didn't get utilized there. Very odd, to say the least. Butter going to be ahead of that smoke. He takes the first, but the second one, not so much. As we're looking at replay here of this solid hold. And yeah, it, it all comes down to this lack of molly and lack of checking. The, the lack of the check suggests to me that Wisconsin anticipated that being molly. I, I almost could guarantee that maybe there's a Molotov missed. You're exactly right. The fact that there was just no one worried about that barrel's position does kind of show you what exactly was going through their heads here now. Into this next one, Wisconsin, they built up quite a bank, so they'll be able to get another buy and no issues. There's still going to be pressure here. Are they going to push this one? That's a bit risky here. And for good reason. He's going to hold on to one. And he grabs a second on his way out. You're going to get a third. That is huge. Shutting down this round before it lifts off. And maybe there is an answer. Maybe there's a response that Minnesota can find. Uh, well, and I mean, right now it's been Wisconsin who have given Minnesota rounds. It seems to be continuing. Sure, Billius has to hit those shots, but like, don't just give it to him for free. <laughs> That's what it felt like. No flash, right? The Nothing. Smoke as well, interesting. I mean, yeah, it's a rather interesting decision making from Wisconsin. I think that's partially atoned to the fact that they are feeling quite confident with yeah. their circumstances. So, I, I I get the thought process. You know, go for a risky maneuver and try and just keep, kick them while they're down, but. Losing two in a row is going to cause some strain here. Oh, he oh. just doesn't check it close enough. Asian assists is going to find the closer. Minnesota State, they move on to three. Now, look at the economy here. It's getting quite low, and they have to make a decision of if they want to hold on to the spy. But, yeah, this is the lack of trading that you were talking about. That, that second one through the smoke, that's just unacceptable. You need a flashbang, the first guy to come through, number one. And then, I added on to that, you, you always are wanting to... to Swing twice, right? Swing, swing together, not mm -hmm. one then the other. So, see, it's a CT timeout here. Not too sure the reasoning, considering that Minnesota has the best run of rounds in this game yet. But 
regardless, it does give Wisconsin plenty of time to figure out their money situation. Like you said, it's not perfect by any means. And uh, I'm going to assume that Butter probably going to have a gun down somewhere. Maybe he's buying late. I don't know. Either way, the buy-in is certainly there for Wisconsin. Only one additional Galil, and uh-oh. We've got, a, we've got a wild butter who's AFK. I'm just going to grab a cup of water here, apparently. thought there were one-minute timeouts. Oh. What's going on here? Okay, so we... Butter's out. We got blood. Now but but lad. <laughs> <laughs> well... They did. Now, but Vlad, he's uh, he's gone down as well. So we're starting this one off for v five. It'd be nice to have one of those bots you could hang about and spawn. But for now, it's going to be uh, a man down here for University of Wisconsin. This would be quite a way to grab uh, eight rounds, so you know, really stick it to him in this four v five. That would be tragic, wouldn't it? If you're <laughs> if you're Wisconsin, you come out to like a seven one lead, then you lose a guy, and it ends eight seven. Oh, nasty. There's a boost here. There's one towards barrels. This could be spotted here. Best Carpenter. I don't know if he's prepared for this, but I don't know if they'll check it fully. Samga hasn't gone around the corner to the fool's fashion, so I don't know if he'll ever get a chance at finding that one. So this boost might all be for naught. Looks, looks like they given up on it. And this is by far the slowest round that we've mm -hmm. seen from Wisconsin. They've, they've often had a very fast pace, whether towards B or towards A. This time it's going to be back towards B. All the flashes, Molly, smokes, come through. Plant? Yet. It's going to be a defense. Asian assist on the site. Zim go with the trade. Plant goes down. Nice shot by Wavy. Follow up, not quite there, but Bilius is in control. Two versus three, you make it a one versus Ooh. three. It's all gone. What a great little adjustment there on the final frag. Best Carpenter doesn't get it. Was actually Scrux, but still, if he wasn't for Scrux hitting it first, Best Carpenter would have had that shot. There's the other pause, right? We're going to uh, not catch Vladimir for much longer in this one. But uh, it, it's looking like a nice recovery here. I, I mentioned that we needed to see some more people step up to the plate, and we've seen just that. We've seen some more more people get their impact. You know, Asian Assist was only good for one frag. Other than that, it was three other kills from three different players. So that fact, despite the 4v5, maybe it was a different story if it was 5v5 because it was a rather good B execute. But the issue was, you know, they didn't have enough firepower to fight off that post plate, and that's some promising signs. You, my BC, Minnesota, come back from the South. Yeah, I, I think that no matter how you slice it, though, a lot of that is, if they do make the comeback, going to be due to the disconnect here. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were making some moves prior to it, but, you know, you cannot help but feel that that certainly will have had an impact, both mentally and uh, for real on the scoreline. But it's another B rush. Here we go again. Oh. This time the Molly hits, and it's going to be a quick hit. smash for Scrux. One frag going the other direction, making a double here. Asian assist always good for two, at least. He's low HP, though. Can't find a third. Not 1v3 here, Cole. Oh, the difference a barrel Molly can make here is Milas is going for this 1v3. Money's still quite high so i guess you could afford around like this but spotted out one headshot goes in spotted out a second as well but can't find the trade on to the third ehn is good to find that one and we do move on to eight rounds there but i mean look at asian assist look at his kill 17 and 11 he sure's having a good time on overpass he just he just can't win those rounds he finds two kills he's good for two but other than that the site still falls apart yeah i mean it's listen we've all been there right Everybody, you're having a good game. You're having the game of your life. And unfortunately, the rest of the squad just, just not quite there. It's a frustrating position to be in, but got to keep the cool. I'm sure Asian Assist doing just that in that he's keeping his cool. Keeping everyone in the game as the buyback is good. But I mean, if you look at the money, not a whole ton left with the exception of Best Carpenter. Flashbang and push coming in towards water. Gonna give control over to Wisconsin. Passive play here towards B. Gonna 
force that smoke grenade out in order to hold off Catwalk for a little longer. And just about every single maneuver that we've seen coming through from University of Wisconsin is rather decisive. They're playing it as a unit here. They are working this map in really good fashion as the smoke gets thrown out. There's no support for Phyllis. He's going to peek out. Flashbang is good, but the spray down fully blind is better here. A kill back, and all the while, EHN is on the lurk, clearing out the B bomb site. He's quickly traded, though, but it keeps the rotations over. 50 seconds left on the clock, and there's going to be a retreat back into the B side of things for Wisconsin. timing fantastic asian only good for one though what a fantastic little trade there why mm -hmm. zam got now allowing for the plant to come down two versus two an awp and an a1s that grenade oh, on point geez. but he gets away zam good good stay alive for now molly flash and then that smoke going down for minnesota flashbang I mean, he's made a lot of noise there. As Zamga. Oh, but Zamga. Zamga, the hero, hits the shot. Huge round for the triple kill on the back of Zamga. Oh, that got really scary there as well. A wavy past one in the smoke and gets killed because of it. But still, it's just a distraction that allows for Zamga to make the play happen. And that moves him on to nine rounds. But not only that. There's a other little note here that Minnesota, they can't afford to get another buy-in. So they're working with the Eagles, double digits, looking likely for Wisconsin, unless they can hit some nice shots with these pistols here. We've seen some nice shots from them before, but mm, it'll be a tough ask for anyone. Another fast hit here towards B. So many flashbangs. I think they're out, at least here at B. Push forthcoming. Here goes Ooh. the one. Carpenter down. He's an assist. He's got his dough. And no, all but he's an assist now gone. And it's quickly him to be followed up. Oh, but there's two back. Minnesota and able to find two answers. And there's a couple low HP bars. Alex shot in with the op out. The nade will finish the job, but Eddie Comet expects a second flank. And meanwhile, the real play is towards Graffiti. Maneuvering towards but Eddie Comet spotted a little glimmer and he's going to have a chance. A freebie, but he's been spotted as well. An AK retrieve, but it's still good for Eddie Comet to close things out. It was a nice attempt. Minnesota almost made that happen, but it's going to be Wisconsin to take the round. That got scary. <laughs> Minnesota. Fantastic. Truly really a quality play there on the eco. But it's 10 rounds. Double digits here in the first. No matter how you slice this, this is a very solid half for Wisconsin. You thought Minnesota might be making a comeback, but and I thought honestly, I, I thought that, that was the case too, but little did I know that Wisconsin still had plenty of gas in the tank here for game one. And half one as they have taken advantage once more. Good map control so far here. They're just working it more systematically once again. That's what we've seen from them. Oh, jeez. Nice attempt. Sam guy's able to cross safely over towards that rock. And on the retreat, EHN's there to meet a Minnesota. And he's getting scared off of every angle. Wavy moving through front bathrooms. But again, it comes down to this control. Minnesota is able to ha have an answer. Takes down Zamga. That's going to alleviate some of that pressure. But again... This comes down to this angle there. Great smoke for Minnesota. Even more good impact from him. Another one of these rounds where Wisconsin have been playing very slow. They've only thrown a couple of these in. When they have, it's been pretty effective. Another thing that's been pretty rare has been A Ooh. hits of any kind. And, oh man, looked like he could have seen his foot right there. But no dice. Go check it. I mean, it's, it would be hard to recognize. I'm not. Well, by no means is this an easy one to, to check. You can't see him without fully peeking the bathrooms, but I think he's already thought he cleared it. The flashbangs are going to be dodged out, and yeah, he's going to play the trigger oh. discipline. All of them sneak by. He's good for one, but immediately oh. gets traded. Minnesota doing the real work here on the back of dice. No scope doesn't connect, but he has some teammates inbound. So Wisconsin. They do drop that last round and a nice hold from Minnesota to maybe give them a bit of cushion. But again, they're heading into their T side here. And that could be a worrying factor. No could be about it.
No, no, no question. If Wisconsin can pick up the pistol here, that would be also devastating for this Wisconsin team. But, well, or rather for this Minnesota team, my apologies. That being said, Wisconsin, they, uh, they're electing to go full armor all the time. Five of them, no kit either against the uh, Glock armor and three bits of utility on the back of Bilius. Here we go. Kicking things off. It's just full confidence from Wisconsin. You can tell it a triple connector setup. I feel like Minnesota State could have took some notes in terms of how they play their fists around the CHD side here. As Carpenter just spotting a lot of information. So many comments able to find that frag, but they're still going for it. It's three kills back in the triple con setup is working to perfection. The A side stack is so very good. So Bomb is forced to retreat in towards a wide open B bomb site. A bomb plant I would consider a huge victory here for this round if they're able to get it. This showing spotted out that one player haven't oh dang two players now they're very dinked down. Surely though, five versus two, this should be just a simple cleanup. As I say that. Two versus two, okay. Whew. He's getting a little dicey there late on Two round or two kills a piece for EHN and Eddie Comet. And Wisconsin do the dirty D. They take the round and they put it to eleven. So Wisconsin are well in in a nice nice predicament to have. They can buy up and they're on the CT side. Yeah, I mean, I, I would give it a lot of credit there to Minnesota and, and Bylas that were able to find that bomb plant and a couple of kills as well, making that. Pissed around semi-competitive in the 5v2, but also the way that University of Wisconsin played that 5v2 was near to perfection. They allowed everyone to scale up into a position where they could find trades very quick. So despite the fact that kills did come through, there was always a man to meet them in that 5v2. They played the numbers game, and now they're looking to play a bit of a, a force buy against this Minnesota State roster. That can be very deadly with these Goliaths. They can make it happen, but it's going to be a tricky road ahead. No doubt. Moss. Oh, I'm a fan of this gun, but that's not a place to use it. It's an MP9, though, and it takes two. It's $1,200 in the bank. But speaking of bank accounts, well, Minnesota, they've purchased all of their bank account. And, well, right now it's working out pretty well. But the problem being, look at how conservative the purchase here is for Wisconsin. They've got three A1Ss. I mean, this is the difference in, in you know, the, the, the lower money where the A1S makes. You can just, you can mm -hmm. buy an A1S and you're fine. Yeah. And you still have some utility. That's that's really what this does with the CTs. Is each end going to be ready? So hard to know. And he is. Big frag. Minnesota does get onto the A site, but at the cost of a lot of health. And with the 2v2, you got to favor Wisconsin. Oh, but there you go. Minnesota, he made a sneaky push in towards Bank. He's going to find out the second as well. So now it leaves Skrunks with full information on where his opponent is. Any comment? No idea where the opposition is. And it's going to be close right. Oh, and he gets deleted. The barrel sticking out. It's both a blessing and a curse. Is that a little silencer is going to show and give a jump for Skrunks to work off of. Brilliant stuff. Minnesota State able to recover off of that force by in this half. Impressive recovery. Nonetheless, but here we go again, though for Wisconsin, this buy is not nearly as nice as what Minnesota State had for their own force. Mm. It's going to be a CZ. It's a deal or two along with the five, seven and that scout for Zamga. And okay, Zamga, oh, wow. he's just deleted ahead. He's going to recover the rifle as well. This could be big. It's a good crossfire setup. Light allows for Wavy to get one frag. In fact, Wavy looking for more. Out somehow. Kills still going the way of Wisconsin. Strux tag low. Sure, it's just pistols, but you gotta be careful. That B bomb site becomes an option now. Too fast on the flank, though. And I don't know how quickly Scrunks will realize that this flank is rolling on off. They've stuck one in towards water. But yeah, there you go, Zamga. 
He's going to start to hit the shift key now as they've made their way already through. At the very least, they could find out Skrunks' position. They're going to send in. They're going to start to move, and Skrunks will he turn around in time. He will. Good for the headshot on a one, but a quick trade back by Les Left Last Alive over towards that short position. And no smoke, no kit for Sam Guy. He's going to have to tap that bomb. He's going to have to do it soon, or otherwise they'll be running out of time in this pose plant. Hasn't done it just yet. Still one towards short hiding. Patient. And a tap gets made. He's going to start to make the move up. And it seems like he's very aware. He's going to catch him off guard. But Violence is able to hit the adjustment in a quick enough fashion to close that one down. Minnesota, they win another 1v1. I'm going to keep it real on that one. That looked like a headshot. And I'm not sure <laughs> how Wisconsin lost it. Because, that, I mean, that really did look like it was on him. But, I mean, just counter-strike things, I guess. Four rounds between the two. And now it's the turn of the University of Wisconsin-Madison to go to the half-buy scenario where you don't really have any money, so you save up for the next. Close attempt there, but here you go. Back to that fountain aggression coming through. It worked out quite well in the last round. Why not go for it again? This time, though, they only have USBs. It's good for the single frag here. There is a map tend to be picked up. Skrunks is on the hard retreat. He's getting the heck out of dodge here as everyone's going to be on the flank, but that should be well read for Minnesota. Yeah, you should know about this. There's, there's just no, no excuse oh, here. Okay, what? I'm saying no excuse, but <laughs> I got to wonder, Minnesota, what's yours? Bush comes back through this time. It's no excuses. That smoke going to make life even more difficult. Nice shots. Coming through from wow. Scrux. Still doing some good damage here. It's Minnesota. Or rather, it's Wisconsin. On to Minnesota. It's Min Scrux and Billy is still alive. And they've got to get out. I mean, they've got to move. How long do they take? And Okay. Damn, we're going to let them out with, uh, with ease. But still, Ooh. I love this spot. This is a nasty spot, isn't it? And just a little show off there in the movement department. That's pretty solid. But yeah, that, that was uh, quite an expensive round there from Minnesota State. But despite that, it's still a round. They're inching towards closing this this gap here. It's three rounds the difference and a little bit unexpected as well. Some good clutching coming through from Minnesota State. They just need to make sure that they can consistently win these rounds. They're doing a great job of toppling the economy of University of Wisconsin. But they've got to make sure it happens for the rest of this half, or otherwise this could be a closeout. But now it's weapons out once again, and so Minnesota, they have something to be scared of, once again. They do, but look at the utility here, Cole. I mean, it's it's tragic. I mean, they're pretty much out already with regard to, I mean, any Molotovs, two smokes, six flashes to, you know, for all of them. So Wisconsin's certainly not loving things. That is a brilliant little boost. When you don't have utility, you boost. And that is a great way to do it. Find one, catch them off guard, take a fall back, and wait for the execute. And there's two players stacked over in connector. And so that is called over. EHN is now down, but it's still that main advantage maintained. Although the quick scale towards A is pretty promising here for Minnesota State as it's only going to be... Oh, no, there is two. Never mind. Cancel that. This is very worrying. They're stuck now in this position as well with no connector control. Hard clear in from oh. Skrunks, so It's going to make things a lot easier, but there is a flank. Zamgus is going to strike, and Eddie Comet the same as distraction play comes through Minnesota and found himself last alive, and there's a couple of HP bars. This is manageable, but he has to isolate these duels in a very tricky fashion, and the flank eventually will come off. Eddie Comet gets bold enough to peek around those dice, and we'll... Have some luck as well with that. Yeah, Wisconsin finally going to answer back off the back of a really solid, I mean, a really solid couple of eco rounds. You got to give them credit for. And and you can see how solid those eco rounds have been if you look at the money for Minnesota. It's only Billius who has cash. He's got 5.6, and everybody else is like, uh, my money's gone. What the heck happened? I'll tell you what happened. You spent it all in 1v1s. And getting absolutely shellacked by Wisconsin's eco. Yeah, that's a, that was a big issue. They, now it's becoming a reality of the, the, the situation that they have to go for a bit of a half by here. And I do like what they're going with. It's a lot of flashbangs. Look at this. There's nine 
Oh they my purchased gosh. up or rather eight. There's a smoke in the mix there too from Bayless. It was blending in as a flashbang, but what did, what do they have planned with all these flashes? Are they just gonna barrel them over? Bomb flashes B, baby. Oh, you're right. You're exactly right. Look at this. Oh boy. Yeah, that's that's my no <laughs> doubt about it. Everybody just throw them flashbangs. That grenade's gonna do massive damage! Oh my god! The AG, the oh, that's oh, just wow. nasty, Eddie. I would, I can we take a look at, at util damage after that? I don't know if we can, but oh, we if we can, let's take a look because Wisconsin they just found like four hundred. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much over before it ever got started. There, the flashes were uh, were pretty much useless when. You're eating grenades and, and Molotovs there, so... Uh, it was a good idea, at least. Hey! Yeah, I, I did like it. Yeah, I was excited for it, but... They, uh, no smoke for that Molly, it seemed. Forced to run through that. No armor as well, making matters worse. There you go, though, Samga. He's gonna have to retreat, but I don't know if he'll make it around the corner in time. He's gotta turn around here, but they don't overextend. Oh. Minnesotan just barely hangs back enough for the escape from Zamga to come through. Big flash, too, from Zamga right there. Not a lot of, I mean, it's it's a higher level thing, but not all players are going to throw that, uh, that flash on the retreat. And that's what, what actually pushed Minnesotan back. The idea that there's another player there. And Zamka, with his life is staying alive, he gets Minnesotan on the refrag. Fantastic look. His best Cartman are going to trade. Oh, an Asian assist is pushed through the smoke for a flank as well. They'll take down Wavy and Zamka. Has watched as his teammates have fallen apart here around him a thin angle but they're instead going to double back towards b and it's going to be any comet with an ak to mount this defense two around the corner he's able to isolate one fight here but he's taking some fire and he's been spotted out he's still trying to fight his way out of the situation good for another turns oh! around for a third and any comet he's going to hold it down quite nice best carpenter i was wondering what on earth just happened b bomb site a complete graveyard and zamga is going to drive in the nail as well university of wisconsin steal that round away Oh my goodness, overplayed maybe, but this is absolutely gorgeous. Eddie oh. on the site defense. He gets the reload in two just for kicks. And that has got to be what would feel like the end of Minnesota State's chances in this game one of the series. Granted, Wisconsin, they still haven't pulled the victory, but that's 14 on the board. It's an eco online. Which means that they should be picking up map point here, barring any craziness. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, you were hoping for a bomb plant for Minnesota State. And uh, that didn't come through. They don't even get themselves another buy-in. They're forced to concede a 10th, or 15th, rather. That was a and 2v4, man. Yeah, that's brutal. I mean, Eddie Comet overperforms massively in pit, and this will just mean 15 locked in for Wisconsin match point on their map pick in a, a pretty confident fashion as well. Oh man, Butter, he's just, oh, he's loving life right now. Absolutely loving life. Oh my goodness, he's gonna push up short though. Oh, wavy. Gonna take his kills over towards A. He'll have some fun with some Ecos. One more around the corner, there's a big shadow advantage in that position. He's gonna spot it out. That's a freebie, given over. Oh Wait, my god, he hold just on. Was that, that a jumpy jumping? dose go? What? Are you kidding? What? What? <laughs> What's going on? Call help. <laughs> I just don't get it. How did he kill two? How did he get a jumping no scope? How did he kill two? He almost found it through the wall. What is going on in this one? I I don't know, but there we oh go. The nose scope in the end. Double oh. no scope, one jumping. Are you serious? Oh, I wish we had somehow seen that from Butters POV, but I don't think there was any way we could have anticipated what was happening there. Oh, my brain doesn't even work right now, man, after that round. So I'm thinking for sure Minnesotan's getting taken down as he's on 4 HP. Two swing towards Cat, and not a single bullet was hit onto him. But the jumping shot does hit. Now make it make sense, please. I'm sorry, uh, my friend. I can't. <laughs> that, that does not compute in my brain either. Oh, boy. 8 to 15, the score.
Second round, sure. Double op versus single op. Double op on the Wisconsin side. We saw that in the last round with Butter and Zamga. Butter doing the big damage with this operator. But can they, can they find success here? Minnesota State, they have to win this. Otherwise, we're headed to map two. Let's see if they're capable of doing so. There's an interesting setup that we got going on towards water. That's just a confident peak from Wavy. And now they're looking to make their move in towards Connector. They get scared off of some nice positioning. And there's three kills back. Answered for Minnesota State to keep themselves afloat here. Bomb has now been planted as well. And through the smoke, Sam is going for some frags. He doesn't catch anything. And the flank has to be a worrying factor. But with two smokes off, they can't really find themselves any access into this bomb site. And so it seems like they're kind of deterred. They might be a save and bound considering a couple of low money positions, but no, instead of flashbang through the monster pipes, an interesting kill there. EHN is going to find himself another in a 2v2 within an instant. There's one more towards Graffini, no. and how is this falling apart? Last is known. It's Krunks to keep them alive. This diffuse is rolling on off. Zamka is going to stick a Glocks out, and he's going to win it in that fashion. Oh University my of Wisconsin, steal it away. Oh my God. What an outrageous way to end out map one of our series. That is redonkulous. I, I, I just don't even know like what to take away from those last like three or four rounds. Because <laughs> they were just, they were ridiculous, weren't they? Just ridiculous yeah. stuff coming through. The no scopes, the deal spam, the, well, clutches. I mean, that, that. 1v3 on the site. Got to be yeah. the highlight of that game, surely. I mean, we had some good 1v1s, right? But, but man, way to overperform on the site. Yeah, no, that was that was an absurd closer of the series right there. I could not believe what I was watching towards the tail end. And, I mean, that last round was pretty uh, a pretty good summary of the matchup there. A lot of uh, decent attempts from Minnesota State. They were able to get it into some clutch situations. They did win a few. But overall, University of Wisconsin maintained control throughout that one, and they wanted to finish off early with that closing round as well. Yeah, two two v four is really turning the tide uh, in the favor of Wisconsin. That said, that was Wisconsin's map pick. Means we're headed towards Inferno next. That's going to be on the flip side of a break, which we're going to take right now. So go get your snacks, popcorn, drinks, whatever you like and fancy. We're going to be back here shortly with more Counter-Strike.
Welcome back for more of the Nice Star League. We were gone with map number one pretty darn quickly, but we got more to come. Map two is coming forward, but first, I mean, we've been talking lots of CSGO. Let's talk more CSGO in the CSL Esports and Prize Picks, running a $25,000 collegiate tournament later this month. Registration's open right now. You head over to CSLEsports.com get more information and details regionals october 23rd and 24th and playoffs coming at the very end of the month definitely not going to want to miss it so head over to cslesports.com that being said uh listen colt map number one it was uh pretty one-sided and we're taking a look at some of how that went down is map number two going to be any different considering that that's minnesota's map pick I certainly hope that we see some more strength, although I will say it did just look like overall as a unit, University of Wisconsin were really, really well drilled. And it kind of got highlighted from the fact that there was kind of individual shining on Minnesota State and there wasn't that unity that was going on for them. Whereas Wisconsin, it was quite the opposite. Everyone was stepping up to the plate. Everyone was having brilliant rounds. And yes, the individuals did rise, but you know, it, it was very impressive. But we are hopping into the matchup here and it's going to be an interesting sign. If Minnesota State can take Inferno, that'll kind of lead to maybe a better result, a better chance to finish things out on Mirage for them. Yeah, I said at the, the start here that if, um, you know, this was going to be a Minnesota State win, it was going to be on a mirage and and we're now guaranteed that outcome if minnesota state can win it out that mm -hmm. being said wisconsin starting here on the uh on the t side as uh as you would expect considering or actually i was saying not not so much what you would expect this is minnesota state's pick so wisconsin choosing to start t side here it's interesting i mean they did have a very well drilled t side on overpass and honestly those b executes that they had if they can continue that over into map number two then no no doubt that this is an exciting prospect here we'll see if uh, they can continue that same pace here as they're looking to go back and towards an a side setup and there's a strong defense to be mounted here from minnesota Ooh. Oh, first shots going down and I think we uh, might have been swapped up here. I'm not sure either way. Minnesota opening there. Good, but Wisconsin's defense even better. Two for one deal. And it is now two on three, but lots of damage being done here. Not all over yet. Butter in the pit. Taking more damage. Taking some pot shots. 
Second player on the site planting that bomb down. Now everyone's tagged a whole Ooh. lot with one exception, but it's EHN, the one player not tagged, who's there for frags. He's got to, two of them to close the round. Wisconsin up again. I, I just liked how the priority from Minnesota State was just to rush that bomb site and get the plant down in that 2v3. To, especially with the fact that pit is going to be one of the harder angles to clear. You can really buy a lot of time, and Butter is doing such a great job from that pit position to find two kills and stay alive. That, that was a great closer for Wisconsin. You can kind of see that Minnesota, their only game plan was to try and get bombed down and get some sort of victory out of it. And they do get the bomb plant. They will get another buy-in here. That'll actually leave them into a, a very nice economical position, but only two rifles picked up the rest on two map tins and eagles. So not a lot of weaponry to work off of. Yeah, not not too much. And with the with the buy, I mean this is the classic buy after the the you get the plant down. Arguable whether or not it's it's a good purchase because if it doesn't work out. Obviously you're in a really tough straight, but. If you win this, man, it is devastating for the CT economy. And that's what Minnesota State are going for. Spotting one player. It's Billy is to take the frag on to Zamga. It was uh, cut out in the in, in a forward position here at B. But with that said, nobody really available to refrag. Minnesota State up a player looking to continue that advantage into a site take. Yeah, unsure of where exactly they're heading as well as we're all spread throughout the map at the moment. Asian Assist is ready to move in through apartments here. And now you're kind of seeing a, a slow crawl towards that A-bomb site. 40 seconds left onto the clock. And when will they finally pull the pin here? Some more control taken for Best Carpenter, but it seems like he's a real distraction. Hey, Bales, there's too much pressure for Eddie Comet to come through. And it's going to be a 3v4 retake on the A-bomb site, one of the hardest sites to retake from. So the question comes into fruition if, if they really want to commit to this. Oh, it's so hard, and especially when you lose butter. Speaking, I mean, butter, your bread and butter, those rifles, one of them down, and that's going to force the, the save. Wisconsin, they don't really have a choice in that matter after losing butter that early on into the retake. What a fantastic look. What a great force buy from Minnesota. As they just really nail Wisconsin right where it hurts. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. That's one of the worst feelings on the CT side. Once you give up a bomb plant, you kind of know that uh, you're in a bad position on that pistol round. And it's just so very classic and Counter-Strike at this moment to get those really good T side second round buys. That's just quite a bit of evidence put forward for that case and now a1s's are picked up here you've got some good weaponry on the t side and obviously you're going for a force by back wisconsin are going to continue this force by war but they're going to be playing it with the pistols more so and, and mp9s this time well see that's the problem you you have such a disadvantage when you're doing this back and forth deal here mm -hmm. that you're you're just in trouble and and that's the problem that's a good little flash Unfortunately, able to get the frag. Oh, that got close. Oh, my goodness. They both get out of banana alive, and they're working with a man advantage, but there's a couple of slim HP bars here that you have to worry about if you're University of Wisconsin in terms of answering back. And I think they're going to be comfortable with their man advantage. I don't know how comfortable they should be. They've tossed over the rifle to the high HP player, and Butter he has a flashbang to work off of, but I don't know if he'll ever get it off. He's playing in that. Okay, no, he's playing on top of Oranges, so they will head in towards B. It's going to be up to those two to defend. I like this flash. There's Butter, and that's fantastic. What a great setup right here by Wisconsin. Oh, and the wow. spray down's absolutely there. EHN with all three frags. Taking names and really showing the coordination. That flash pops. You can see it here so in the replay. Off the screen there for EHN. So you don't have to worry about playing anti-flash or anything. And they've planned that. That That is 150% a planned setup for Wisconsin. That just shows you how well drilled they are. Yeah, not only that, but Skrunks could have maybe gotten the trade there. 
if he wasn't fully blind. But the fact that that with flash was thrown buys enough time for him to hold it down. Really solid stuff in that third round here from University of Wisconsin. That's some of the nicely drilled stuff that we expect from him. And here's some confidence. Here's him not playing scared oh, any longer. Okay. Oh, God. That's ugly. That's, that's hey, ugly to say the least. You kind of want that one back. Yeah. Oh, there's still butter in the bottom of mid, though. He's uh, just hanging out behind enemy lines. Oh nice frag there. Gonna save the life of, uh, I think it was Ian Shin on the other side. Now it's just a one versus three. Some decent damage, I guess, but mostly gonna go up against those SMGs. So Wisconsin not too bothered. And Minnesota, well, they finally have a buy, but look at how, how rough the buy is. Not a whole lot of utility to back it up. Looks like, yeah, Galil gonna come out there for Asian assist just to get. The full util on his back at the very least. And I'd honestly like to see him have all of the firepower, all of that attention drawn towards his position because he's been so very good. Either way, B rush is inbound here. Nades are going to be good. They're committed to this angle. And I mean, you're going to be dead to rights here, Butter. No way you can get out of that. <laughs> yeah, you will go down. He couldn't escape. And it's a quick trade as well. Zamga is only good for a single frag before that round's over. And. They're going to push through the smoke as well. Billis is going to find himself another kill in the EHN. And I think, again, you're just going to have to call a fast retreat from Wisconsin. Nice B-Rush coming through from Minnesota. Rarely do I say it, but yeah, great B-Rush. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, it, a lot of times at this level here at Collegiate, you know, Varsity, we see those B-Rushes mm, tend to not work out, at, at least not in this manner, not this well. You know, it's, it's like best case scenario, like a 3v3 retake kind of deal. But no, really well done there from Minnesota. They they catch out two players, only one trade. And it's a easy round. You know, they're tying things back up. As they get out towards Banana, everyone's surviving. Yeah, nice and explosive execute. So one of the things that we saw at University of Wisconsin do a lot on their T-sides over and over pass as well, where... They had a lot of good protocols. Not only did they have, you know, a little bit of defaulting into B executes. I didn't see too much crazy A, a executes, but uh, the B side, they had fast rushes. They had slow plays into B hits. And so, you know, Minnesota State giving them a taste of their own medicine in that sense. And it's good for a conversion. I, I will say in the differentiate oh. just a little bit. That's an unfortunate Miss Molly, but uh, <laughs> oh, differentiate no. a little bit, though. That was a lot of set grenades what? and everything for, for Wisconsin. Minnesota yeah. just W keyed that. There was <laughs> yeah, no, exactly there was no right. setup. Yeah, you know, you you're making on right there. There certainly was a bit of uh, reliance on some entries and in, in opening frags, and honestly, a little bit of mistakes from University of Wisconsin in yeah. the terms of how they isolated themselves in their banana hole. But uh, they're not isolating themselves in this round. They've got a nice crossfire here over towards brackets, but we'll see how it's able to convert for a round, Wisconsin. A commitment is going to be made here in the A side. Nice double swing there. He's been going down. Ooh, and he's oh. taking lots of damage, but he's going to be good. Great timing there for Zam. Going to swing. Going to trade out for an AK-47. He's got the frag on that one. The double kill. Double spray down from Eddie on the backside as they try to trade Zamga. Wisconsin answer back in style. Yeah, I mean, Sam got huge overperformance in the pit, able to move in and cause attention. You can see that two players full tuned into his position, and Eddie Comet gets the freest two kills of his life. There is <laughs> that triggers a timeout for Minnesota State. They're going to call that one up and try and figure out a recovery because look at this money, weird position, best carpenter, and uh, buy this along with Skrunks. They're all able to buy, they all have enough money for that. But the question is, do they want to go for it? It's so, it's so hard, isn't it? I don't I don't know. If I'm them, three out of five players can full buy. I might just say go for the three AKs and get what you can on the other two. But I think this is a very valid idea as well. Do the, the full save on two players, get the you know drop over maybe a pistol or two to your other guys, and then buy pistol armor on the rest who can afford it. Definitely viable in addition. Unfortunately, Eddie has taken some damage via a knife in the back. <laughs> Not a way you want to start around, but oh. it is an eco, and that 
Well, honestly, because it's an eco, it might be even worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it certainly will be if that happens to be like a Tech 9 headshot from a little bit of distance where you're like, man, I could have walked away if I was on your HP, but <laughs> yeah. move. Well, they will be able to move forward with that not being too much of a worry factor. Oh, that sound. That's a big sound cue made from Sam. They're going to hold the position. He's going to find himself stuck here on the balcony. And it's two kills back. No, only one so far for Eddie Comet. But he's got a teammate close by to bail him out. They need to make a move on. Cold box coming through from Eddie Comet. And he'll close it out with a finishing frag there. It was a little bit dicey. They were able to find some nice timings and a great flash setup for that balcony position. But not enough firepower from Minnesota State in that round, simply put. I actually think that that was a huge mistake from Zamga and Wisconsin are pretty lucky that mm -hmm. he got one for oh, one yeah. and then the rest of the team were able to bail him out in the same way that they did because Eddie could have definitely gotten immediately one tap with a deagle there. He just, he fortunately was was aware enough to step away at, at a good time and it wasn't quite a, a hit shot um, from, from Minnesota, but it's another B rush. Oh, and a missed shot by Wavy. Gonna, gonna fall back. This is continue. There's no, no utility. At all, pretty much. The molly goes down. This shot there from Wavy, but Butter hits his. Two for two. That leaves the AWP on site to be recovered by Minnesota. Oof, yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting round so far and how it's panned out. Behold, not looking too sturdy here, but maybe there's a retake to be mounted. Minnesota sticking around. Scrunks has a chance, but he misses his opportunity in Minnesota. If you remember, he's taken down quite low. Hard clear needs to come through from Zamga. He is going to not what? find it. He misses that shot. What a miss it was here. Pilots now hiding in the pool position. They can play a pretty effective crossfire. They feared out all of sight, but pool hasn't been checked here. Shots being rolled off EH and is able to close that one down. And now he has to find the line. He's good for it, but is there enough time EH? And there certainly is. He's got a kit and he's got the round as well. But what an unbelievable round right there. That's chaos. Uh, yeah, again, mistake from or mistakes, uh, plural from Wisconsin. <laughs> but they're bailed out by. Some number one dicey play from Minnesota. Struck. I, I gotta gotta say, Scrux. I it just you're playing on an island, you know. When you're when you're making that play, it's a one and done at best. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess if you if you pull off the hero play, good for you. But but against a, a team as good as Wisconsin, that's just gonna happen one out of ten times. Yeah, I mean you can't replicate it all that often here. B rush once again. Why not? been working out quite well for you but a nice change of approach here the aggression was fanning out and at the moment well it's full control of the entirety of the map besides a little bit of boil boiler control and well there's a kill finally but i was able to find that turns around though he's tapping the toes and well the finishing blow will go his way there goes the seventh oh. wisconsin in rather quick fashion look at how much utility wisconsin pulled that round back with because they were so aggressive they didn't use the Jack diddly squat. They didn't nothing, and they oh, got wow. so much money left to, in in just a couple of rounds. One, this is fantastic for the Wisconsin um the you economy, long term health, um rebuys, all that kind of good stuff. Wisconsin are loving life here. Yeah, they're feeling so so very confident. I mean, that's a very confident peak for Medicom. It's good for a one for one, but we talk about this quite often. The fact that. CT's going for one for one maneuvers it can be dicey. It spreads the defense quite thin, depending on how you're able to play with it. And I mean, you can see it two players on a, if that's where Minnesota state finish, that will be an easier take in terms of the, the four V two that they have to work with rather than it being, you know, say a, a five V three over on that. A bomb site. 100%. Oof. Nice frag there by Scrux, but we was going to trade that back. If he's missed some shots there over at the B side, but this time he hits. And Zamga, who takes a duel, winning that out, leaving Bilius all alone. One versus three. And sure, Zamga low health, but he just really got asked the question, you know, how, how winnable is this? And you can take a 1v1 mm -hmm. here. That would be big, but it's hard to know that Zamga's playing in, in that stairwell position, it's such a hard read to make. You just assume he's playing in pit. And 
Well, as soon as he peeks out here, it should be the end of days, and it is indeed. So yeah, I'm pretty much playing that flawlessly, if you ask me. Oh yeah, 100%. And the icing on the cake is he denies the bomb plants as well. I mean, couldn't ask mm. for much of a better round right there in terms of not having to worry about another good rifle round for Minnesota State. It's always such a reliever, especially on that CT side. Once you're able to build up economy and deny bomb plants, it actually makes a T side save. I know it's a rare occurrence, but you can see their buy rate now super lacking in terms of what they're able to bring into fruition. Now, it's still good tech nines, but those haven't been working all that well. And look at this. It's confidence shown from Wisconsin, and for good reason. One kill and a freebie, and the lineup's there, but it's two Ooh. kills back, and that's going to leave the A bomb site compromised. That it is. I was wondering, Billy is at 900 H or dollars rather left i'm not sure that he's gonna have enough to buy but with a bomb plan it should be fine and now it certainly will be awp retaking a certainly not an ideal scenario mm -mm. the 3v3 with the weapon advantage you sort of i i, I kind of feel you have to go for this oh you, yeah you'd be crazy not to and here we go that's a retake utility as well here that they can throw down range one stuck into the pit and they're gonna start to make their move now there's one still back of sight it's so focused coming through from butter as he moves out of the apartments and they're all going to collapse it's three kills in quick succession for wavy and butter man they just get the job done in such a convincing fashion there yeah and you know some would say that, that that's a mistake being so um you know one dimensional i will say on that retake you know it was butter i believe who was very much focused on dispatching the guy in pit but you have to be you have to be you have to trust your your teammates flashes you have to trust where your teammates are coming through you have to trust that they have your back and that's exactly what butter was doing double awp here for the defense and this is something we've seen before on inferno it can be a great thing to see but oh boy here we go again cole <laughs> Quite like this B-bomb site, don't they? Here, another Molotov thrown in. What is going on? Wavy trying to push through it. Two smokes down. Butter playing right around. It's good for two frags in. He gets blinded up. Eventually will fall. And now Wavy on an island towards B. But he does start to connect some AWP shots here, which is rather nice to see. Nade's going to play a touchdown on a Minnesota. More damage onto him. 25 to his name. And a 4v2 in the early stages of this round does not bode well, despite the bomb being planted for Minnesota State. No. Yeah, this is... This is looking like it's going to end in tragedy especially considering that eddie's just come back around the corner low health for minnesotan takes one shot misses his mark and throws some damage into the back of the h in <laughs> not going to matter in the long term as wow Oof. i can't i mean i i will say that i wasn't expecting more dominance than we saw in the last game but i mean that's what we're getting minnesota state are floundering here yeah, I mean, you and I both thought that this was going to be a uh, rather convincing 2-0. I think we maybe gave a chance on Inferno. Uh, yeah. Right now, it's not looking like Minnesota State could really mount up a chance. Now, the one saving grace we did have on Overpass was Asian Assist having himself an unbelievable amount of impact. And Minnesota, with the op, was another saving grace. But right now, he's not showing up in the same fashion he was on overpass he's not 20 kills in the first half showing up so it's going to put them a little bit on the back foot here and i think that's kind of shown in the scoreline right now yeah and i want to i want to clarify to anyone who's thinking that, that that's us uh, um saying the asian assist is is doing poorly or should be expected to be fragging like that we are not mm -hmm. uh, what we are mentioning though is that you know when asian assist is playing that well it certainly does make things easier for you. And with that, Minnesota might have a chance to pull around here out the hat. They're going to be having a control. It's four versus two in their favor. And I think this is more than likely just to save. Now, granted, the money that um, Wisconsin has would really allow them to come in if they wanted. But, yeah, you can see them going away. They don't really want anything to do with that. And that's the, that's the intelligent play, even with only two rounds left in the half. Yeah, 100% right there. I mean, we will say money is in a position where maybe, uh, yeah, you're not going to win a 4v2 retake, though, to be honest on the, the I mean, bomb site. Th they did twice in the last game, though. <laughs> That's true. Inferno, luckily, I mean, once you get the bomb plated on A, it almost becomes impossible in a man. Yeah. I mean, I say that, but you're, you're right. There's been 
there's been crazier things that we've seen pretty much so <laughs> good call overall i will say in terms of percentages for wisconsin but uh yeah this is where it all kicked off minnesota we kind of talked about him in the early stages of the round he's able to have impact kicking things off the op and from there on out they're able to maneuver with their man advantage in playing a nice little retake or rather you know execute towards that brackets they tried to regain that control but minnesota state they took it confidently well and and you know talking about minnesota this awp he hasn't had it he's just not had it you know not really had an opportunity to from from the force buys early on um to the always being broke all the time oh, that hurts. to getting spammed through the wall nice start there and a good trade one for one as well all oh, the timing there by butter he's gonna take that frag he's got the no scope too outrageous from butter he wanted another one he got a little cheeky with it he tried <laughs> but he doesn't hit it it's still two versus two wavy on the site misses his mark ehn now the one to play but he's got the flank he's got the frag denies the plant looking for more two hp and a dream for billy billy's gone and that's wisconsin 11 to 3. <sighs> Oh my God, Butter! How do you get away with two there? I love that he went for that no third no scope <laughs> as well, man. You just need to go for that third. If you're if you're hitting that second no scope, you're going for the third, no yep. questions. And Butter, he has the confidence to do so. There's University of Wisconsin are going to take their eleventh round. I mean, it wouldn't have been the case if Butter hadn't had his impact. It was a nice clutch as well from EHN to close things out, but. It just puts them on the back foot once again. You mentioned that there's no op for Minnesota uh, uh, quite frequently in this first half. It's going to be the case to close things out as well. And once again, it's the economy. That's the reason. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, Minnesota, I'm just saying, has not had the opportunity, pun intended, to uh, utilize that weapon of choice. Nice opening there by Asian and Minnesota. Got to get one of his own. Ray doing damage, but not going to find a frag oh, wow. there for EHN. As everybody gets around the corner. Still a good look here for Minnesota oh. State as EHN gets caught out. Two versus four now. Stuck around for just a little bit too long, and it's going to trigger a fast B side attack coming through for Minnesota State. I mean, that's the point you're thinking for, looks likely, for Minnesota State. But the issue is there's still a lot of these failed closers. And rounds like these from Minnesota State that we, that we can remember over from over past years. We're going to see maneuvers in towards the back call right now. Need to find some quick kills. They need to move a little bit quicker on this retake. An Asian assist has already spotted out one. He's going to tuck himself into the corner. Banana smoke thrown down, but his teammate goes down in the meantime. And that one should kind of be the uh, the, the final nail on the coffin in this one. I mean, low HP on a couple players, sure, but you're right. I mean, the bombs have ticked away a whole lot with that dink. It's. Seemingly impossible. There it is. Billy is with the final frag. But this uh, scoreboard sort of tells you a story, doesn't it? Not a single player for Minnesota breaking that double-digit mark in the frag department. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, that's just never what you want to see at the end of a half, is it? You know, when you're hitting tab. Wisconsin, on the other hand, feeling good. 11-4. to four. On the CT side, of course, CT sided this map by just a little bit of margin. But, I mean, now this is do or die time for Minnesota. Working with a whole lot of confidence is Wisconsin, and their T side was very, very promising. I mean, obviously, a 11-4 CT side is good. But over on overpass, we remember, they did have a lot of explosive executes. They had a lot of dis good decision-making here as they're going to walk into it. It's a gr brackets crossfire. Best Carpenter able to close out a kill before he's eventually retreating off the line. And it gun is going to leave Skrunks alone. Actually, there's Minnesotan to recover a couple of kills back, maybe. But there's one from Zamga that's going to make matters worse here. And a bomb plant is going to bode well. Another kill in, and it enters into a 2v2. The crossfire, they're walking into it. They're isolating these duels here. They're struggling to find a frag back. And this could be a T-side oh. victory as a clothesline from Wavy comes through. And Zamga finishes it off with a 4K. It's going to be the 3v5 victory. Not again, Cole. <laughs> oh, no. Minnesota State just can't get out of their own darn way sometimes. Mm-hmm.
I mean, yes, I don't want to take away credit, man. Wisconsin, what a great crossfire. What a good, you know, way to, to find those frags. But still, man, yeah. Minnesota, they just need to double swing. They just have to. And there's just no excuse for losing a five on three on a pistol like that. It did. It started off so well as well. I, I love what we were seeing. And the, the opening crossfire and even the retreat coming yeah. through. It, it was looking so good. They had the 5v3 and they were kind of able to tuck on towards site. But it did very quickly become an issue as site became compromised. And hesitation kicked in. Minnesota State, that's around again where you probably should have closed that one out. You'll be watching that back as the flashbang setup's good. But it's not good enough to take down Wave. You spamming down a second. Zam is going to take it away and B bomb site. Super compromised at the moment. A desperation play for Minnesota, but it just doesn't pan out for anything. Not, not gonna happen. Fortunate timing there on the uh, put away of the gun, but Chen has his back. UMP, I don't see, don't see that very often anymore. To that, you know, nerf back in the day, it's, you know, less favorable, but still quality weapon, especially closer range, especially against the lack of armor. As I say that, no lack of armor for the rest of Wisconsin, and we can see why you would not favor that gun with armor. Wisconsin 13 to 4. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, looking pretty rough considering that it's likely going to be 14 to 4 as well after this one's finished, all set, done. But... It does uh it does leave it all on the line of, of this next gun run. You can see little to no investment. Best carp would be the only one really buying a pistol upgrade and maybe you can get some action done with the Zeus from Minnesota, but playing very decisive at the moment as University of Wisconsin executes everything. It's looking rather clean and uh, everyone's stepping up to the plate to make it look like that. Nice little double oh. setup there. But uh Unfortunately, it's only going to be good for one. Flashbang in towards the site. Drugs still not going to find anything. USPS. Oh, I had a Zeus. I didn't spot the Zeus, but yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a good trade for, for money. $200 for a full kit. Yeah, that's solid. He'll take that one happily. Now, it... Gives them a, a nice chance with uh, another buy round here. They got the AWP. They got the rifles rolling on off as well. A lot to be excited for in this round for Minnesota State. But it does require a conversion because if you drop this one, we are uh, looking at 15 to 4 and a likely terrible buy coming through that disaster scenario where you're on a lacking buy towards your lifeline. And uh, it just doesn't look like Minnesota State have a chance at closing this one out. It, it becomes a question of can they make it look a little more respectable at this point. Yeah, that is definitely the question. Wavy. Oh boy, Wavy. Wavy, it looks like he's been inspired by uh, the last round. Looking for somebody to get aggressive. He's taking a lot of damage, as has Butter. Some early you still look. <laughs> no way. I mean, I, I, <laughs> listen, Wavy, that was <laughs> ambitious, to say the least. I think he's trying to get revenge. Uh, 100%. There's no doubt. His pride his pride is hurt. He's he's upset because of what happened to him. I can't remember if it was him or his teammate, but even still, it's even more... Right, look, every, everybody has teammate. a taser for Wisconsin. Oh, they're all trying to get revenge there. It's it's a group effort, so you tase me, I tase you back, but right but, now... Why buy guns if you're going to do that, seem... though? That's a good question. <laughs> the taser can be your uh, much better weapon. Quality. At least on Whoa. the uh oh my egg. God. I don't know what Eddie got stuck on. It should have should have been able to get through there. Ooh, bomb point does come off. That's an extra chunk of change, but yeah, I think he got stuck on a big wall that, that uh I, I might have went a little too deep into spawn. A little too ambitious there. And that was kind of the case for the entirety of that round. All ambition from the University of Wisconsin buying up those Zeus's, but with a bomb plant. It does actually afford them maybe another gun round in here. The uh, <laughs> flashbang. Maybe if he was blind, there would have been a better chance. But even still, there's one plane anti-flash around the corner. So yeah, likely not the case. A good setup for Minnesota. Got to give him credit for that. 
I guess everything's a pretty good setup if you're uh, playing against tasers only, but hey. My back end is here. No tasers to speak of, not this time. It'll be still online here for Miss Minnesotan. And uh, see if that can be one of the big factors. Nice timing there on the spam from Scrox, but gonna be able to get away? Yes, he does. Chasing him down. Jump peek around the corner. His teammate goes down in the meantime. And Eddie Comet can't find that trade in time. Sights become compromised as Minnesota tries to recover it by playing inside of the site. He's able to find a quick reaction. Knife's out as well. He can't find the no-scope for the second. And so Asian assisting. Yeah, They're forced to fight their way out of the situation here. And it seems like Sam is aware of this position. Aware of this flank that's rolling on off here. And do not want to lose around like this. Oh, he sees the shadow right around the corner. He's going to find it. He's so aware of that position, and it leaves Asian Assistant a really tough 1v2. I love that Zamga, despite the confidence he's playing with, just falls back. No reason to give the advantage away. It's crossfire. Nice adjustment there from Asian Assist. And he's got the Ooh. pistol out. He's connecting the shots. It's pretty close on oh, the defuse. Oh, boy. No time. No, it's not going to happen. 15 now for Wisconsin. You got to feel for Asian assist. He made it work, but well, this game not only about kills, but you got to defuse that bomb. Oh, so <laughs> okay. Negev. All right. All righty. You got five Negevs in play here. I haven't seen and this I for like a it. long time, actually. I've never seen it, so uh, this is my first time here. I will say, though, that there was a chance, I think, for that defuse. If it was planted for default, maybe if he actually didn't loop around that box, mm. I think he missed his mark there. So one to get down, four to go. <laughs> a lot of ammo in these to fire down. They won't be doing too much banana peeking as uh, they hear all those bullets. Like, hey, uh, I guess we won't peek car this round. Nope, nope, definitely not. Don't know that that molly was necessary. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I see what's going on, he says. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> what is happening, dude? <laughs> One kill with him. At least they got a frag. <laughs> oh. I can. There was a. Look at this. I hope that they have the. Re okay, here's the replay of the op shot there. That's fair. Minnesota, that was a nice and quick op. Look at this. <laughs> what is Butter doing? He's, He's just You himself. gotta respect the commitment. F fully flash banged up. It's just taking the shots anyway. Oh, it's surreal. No, no money. I wonder why. <laughs> I don't even know how much. The, I mean, the, the gas not expensive anymore. Didn't they change really that? Cheap. Yeah, 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 super cheap nowadays. But losing rounds doesn't do too much help. You gotta invest all that armor and all of that. So, so it, it, it's becoming rather respectable. Now, how we got there, we won't ask questions when we look at the final result. It you was know, an we'll ace. say, hey, that was an ace. Maybe. Was it an ace? Yeah, I don't know who got the ace, but I saw the ace. Okay. Solid. But we'll say at the end of the day that... Uh, oh, it was Bylas. Nice stuff from him. But uh, it's going to be rough for them. Yeah. Uh, because you're giving up a couple of troll rounds, but you know it's not going to be a 15-4 to four victory. It's going to be more like a 16-8 to uh, eight maybe, or 16-9. to nine. So give Minnesota State a little bit of respect for their name here as... Uh, it does have to feel a little bit relieving that we're not getting shut down in some of these troll league rounds from University of Wisconsin. Yeah, that's some timing. As oh, says there's that. another timing. <laughs> um, that op's going to be quickly dispatched. Oh, running out of bullets here is Best Carpenter. He's still got one, but see, are they going to be able to go and recover that op? I'm not sure. Oh, and EHN is in a fantastic spot. Oh, nice jiggle. In fantastic jiggle, but unfortunately, that jiggle is uh, just going to be a little bit too, a little too late. Not like this. Mm. <laughs> you don't lose to the Negevs, but you lose, lose to the pistols. Have you really regained any respect? <laughs> I don't know. It honestly was super unfortunate. Two really bad timings. Granted, there could have been a better positioning as well yeah. and, and that mid smoke. So, I mean, is it timing? Is it a uh, misexecution? Uh, questions for a later date here is university of wisconsin they take that one it was always going to be their game uh into that second half into that pistol round victory but yeah as expected uh 
pretty comfortable 2-0 victory for University of Wisconsin. Yeah, pretty pretty comfortable is a uh, a fair way to put it. It was yeah. a a situation I think where for Minnesota State they were just a little outgunned, um, mm-hmm. a, a little a little bit um, on on just the fragging power side of things. It was clear to me that the clutch potential was always there, and when the clutch potential is always there, that that you know tells you that there's a, a fragging power difference. I don't know if you agree, yeah. but hundred percent. Yeah, whenever you can find your way out of situations that just realistically should never be coming to fruition, this being maybe one of them, you know, mm-hmm. like that's just, this is just outrageous. Really good timing, really good communication, and everything like that. So Wisconsin's gonna love it, love it as they uh, pull away with a 2-0. Yeah, no, you nailed it. Like, a lot of the impossible rounds to win uh, is really evident in the fact that there is a symbol difference in the firepower between these two teams. This, is, this will never fail to crack me up. Asian Assist just watching them as they push forward is too funny here. And it, it was a super solid game. University of Wisconsin, until the very end when they knew that it was locked in, until they started buying the Gevs, it did look like they were checking all of the boxes in terms of how they were throwing their executes and even in the first map as well. Same case, and except less trolling as they were still even on maps, but uh, it, it's super promising for the future of Wisconsin as well. Yeah, and well, speaking of the future of Wisconsin, they, they move up to 5-1 and one here on the season. It is week six. Unfortunately, Minnesota State, I, I hate to... I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but they're going to be at that three and three scenario. That's certainly not a bad showing by any means, but it's definitely not top, uh, you know, top position in their mm-hmm. division, um, and and that's what they're obviously going for. You know, is is top position. That's I, I know we we haven't necessarily discussed kind of how things work, but um, those top places in in your division are what gets you the overall playoff spot. So mm-hmm. it, it definitely is. You know, it pays to be up top, so to speak. We are waiting, by the way, on on interview. Um, I think we're going to get Zamga in uh, relatively shortly uh, from w- University of Wisconsin, but we're still working on that. Um, nonetheless, Colt, you know, what could Minnesota have done a little bit differently on Inferno to uh, to start to turn the tides? What were the big mistakes that you noticed? I mean, honestly, I think they just needed to rush B every round. I think if they would have done that, it would have maybe offered up some better chances. Those were the only real successes on their T side that that got them four rounds for the most part was fast moving. It seemed like when they kind of slowed things down, they couldn't really work the map as they had hoped for. And uh, the defaults kind of only entered into lost uh, rounds. And uh, yeah, we do have an interview though that is ready. We do indeed. But first, I, I want to talk a little bit uh, about the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Uh, since 1949, LLS has invested nearly $1.3 billion in groundbreaking research, pioneering many of today's most innovative approaches. They work tirelessly to find cures and ensure patients can access the life-saving treatments that they need when someone experiences the fear and certainty of a cancer diagnosis. LLS provides hope passion, education, and support. So just like LLS is making an impact in the cancer community, the LLS hero of the game represents the player who made the biggest impact in the match played, whether it was a clutch play or sacrifice or provided strong leadership when it mattered the most. Today's LLS hero of the game is indeed Zamga, who is joining us for the interview right now as uh, we bring him in. Zamga, how are you doing, my friend? Oh, feeling good, feeling good. Always happy to get the dub. The dub you did get. I mean, and and a pretty dominant one at that, I have to add. Um, the team comes, got to be feeling very strong there at the end. We saw the Negevs, the Tasers, and we were enjoying <laughs> it here on the desk. Good, good. Yeah, always happy to put on a good show for the guys. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so heading into that that second map, obviously overpass, it looked pretty good. I actually want to talk about overpass before I get into that second map. But we saw that on overpass, you guys just really, really inch towards that B-bomb site quite frequently. And you had a lot of cool executes, a lot of different ways that you moved around that. Was there any reason that you targeted that site? Honestly, just ever since we started with this team, the B-bomb site has been like our best friend on overpass. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully not too many teams look into that before our next game. But, uh, but yeah. We've just always been super comfortable going B on Overpass. Yeah. Maybe we'll start going A on the next game. Who knows? Okay, throw them off guard there. 
Yeah, you you guys are sitting at five and one now on the season. Um, is uh, there anything that you're worried about as you move forward? Um, you know, any any teams that you're concerned to play uh, in y'all's division? Yeah, so in our division, our division is honestly pretty stacked, in my opinion. Um, we got Davenport, Michigan State, uh, us, Indiana. All these teams are really good. So uh, I think towards the end of the season, we play Michigan State and Indiana, and those two games should be pretty close. So we're just preparing for those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, certainly some tough competition up ahead. I mean, do you think that like a confident win tonight will help you in the future? Oh, for sure, yeah. This, uh, like, every win just makes us more and more confident going into the next one. So, yep, mm -hmm. just going to be looking forward to those tougher opponents next. So, talking about map two a little bit, I know, Cole, you might have had a question here, but I'm going to go and ask one of my own. Go so, ahead. you you guys had a really fantastic, I mean, fantastic whole map, but but especially the start there, right? It was, I mean, it was, it was dominant. Um, how did you guys continue to dominate you know after those first couple of rounds you get the ec economic control um what is what is the communication like to, to change things up and and make sure that you're you're adjusting on the fly yeah so on the second map we noticed that they were throwing a lot of fakes at least at the beginning so the comms that we made was just like if we don't see bombs just don't rotate um i think the one time they caught us off guard was when they rushed b which actually worked out really well against us so that caused us to make some more adjustments but for the most part, mm -hmm. we felt like we could read their playstyle pretty easy based on the first map, which is like fake one side, go the other one. So we were just like making sure our site players stayed like rocks, not moving, and it uh, it worked out pretty well. Cool. Cole, any any other questions for you on uh, on that or? Yeah, I mean, I I'm good to go. Is there anything that you want to uh, shout out before we head out? Oh, just shout out to all the viewers and uh, thanks you guys for having us on the on the stream and uh, thanks to you guys for casting. So it's a good time. Well, we uh, we absolutely loved it and Zamgat, mm -hmm. we appreciate you uh, coming on uh, for for the interview. Have a great rest of your uh, your evening and congratulations to both you and and your team. Yep, thank you guys. And with that, we are uh, going to be headed towards the very end here of our first series, but don't worry. We got another one coming on here pretty darn shortly. That being said, we are going to be headed towards a little bit of a break, and we're going to get ready for our upcoming matchup, which is going to be a uh, nice little southeastern showdown in Georgia Tech and Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, we'll see you on the flip side here at the Nace Star League.
Howdy and welcome back off the back of our short little break. We're coming back in for our second best of three of today. Vincent Guest alongside of XR20 and we're getting ready for more CSGO action. And well, speaking of CSGO action, CSL Esports and Prize Picks are running a $25,000 collegiate tournament later this month. You register uh, now, you can head over to CSLEastWords.com for more details on said registration. That is indeed open right this second. You don't want to miss it. $25,000 collegiate tournament. Lots of cash on the line. Make sure to check that out to CSLEastWords.com. Um, as we move for Doe Cole. Man, I am... I've got to be honest. I'm really excited for this matchup. Not because... We were seeing Florida Gulf Coast again, though I do mm -hmm. like them, and I think they're a fantastic team that could really use a victory here, sitting at three and two. The other thing that uh, I I'm excited for is that I think you know I'm 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 a Georgia native, you know, born and raised here in Georgia, just a couple of uh, just like 30 minutes away from the Georgia Tech campus. So in in that spirit, I'm gonna be wearing the Tech yellow for the rest. Oh, there the rest we go. Of the, uh, rest of the, this this game i got the uh i got the logo back there but i you know it's 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 hard to hard to it's pull it in here it. Yeah. yeah either way i'm excited georgia tech florida gulf coast why don't you bring us through some of the names that we're going to see on the server yeah it's going to be an exciting matchup i kind of mentioned it in the pregame that this is going to be one uh that, that we should look forward to more so than that first matchup in terms of just like competitiveness and it's for good reason florida gulf coast like you mentioned a return roster here of tripler pepper terror greatness and wad and on the other end of things we got georgia tech rocking with knz chez micah and brosif stalin love that name that's a it's gonna be a mouthful there and minus <laughs> as well so a uh, lot of competitive names here and, and i think that you mentioned it perfectly in the way that florida gulf coast they really need to win here tonight and it's going to be a tough matchup for uh for them to gather it versus a team like georgia tech yeah and and whilst i haven't gotten a lot of um i haven't got a chance to see a lot of this georgia tech roster georgia tech mm. always has had a good counter-strike team um i mean just Speaking from my experience as uh, you know, a local land player in this area, um, you know, within the Florida Georgia area, like they always would have the best collegiate team. You know, the UGA and, and the such always kind of in there, um, and and then we've we've seen UCF and how quality they are. Um, you know, mm -hmm. just a couple of seasons out from a victory here in the uh, collegiate star league, but. With that being said, Georgia Tech has always been there or thereabouts. And so that's why this 4 and 1 record just does not surprise me. One bit, one iota. And like you were talking about, that coming up against FGCU, who are 3 and 2, um, you know, they had a tough loss. We saw it on stream. ISU Redbirds, they dominated over mm -hmm. FGCU. And it was much in part to uh, 60 player that you and i have talked about in ad yeah. nauseum a uh, an incredible player coming in from uh from the highest levels of, of premiere um and uh, essentially you could call the, him a, a semi-pro or even you know probably even a pro you know that that sort of level of play at least here in north america so without a player like that on the other side of the fgc you have a lot better chance of picking up a victory uh here today against georgia tech but uh, you know, individuals just to, to take a look at there for FGCU. Who are you looking for? Uh, I really liked what I saw from Wad. I believe in that, that last time that we casted him. It did seem like he was rather promising, and uh, it, it's something to look forward to here in the future. But like you mentioned, it was a lot of, of terror on that ISU roster. And yes, 60 obviously was a huge worrying factor. 60 was doing a little bit of uh of trolling in that game and so really the heavy lifters of that were the rest of isu who were who were playing so well so uh, they're obviously a team that everyone's going to worry about here in the uh in the league so yeah uh, yeah it's not going to be easy for georgia tech tonight i do think that florida gulf coast will have a better chance though like you mentioned versus a team like isu yeah uh, be better is is certainly something that you would like to see you know it's never going to be nice if you are just 
str stuck struggling against a, um, a team that is is outpacing you. But that said, mm -hmm. four and one, no slouches. This uh, all. this Georgia Tech side. I mean, they've they've definitely been taking uh, taking some names, showing out, showing off. Um, you know, they had, they had a buy, or actually, I think a couple buys. No, yeah, one one buy there. Um, in in week four and one in in week two but mm -hmm. you know the only loss they have this season is to, is to the ucf knights so and arguably yeah. they are one of the stronger teams you know i i'd argue top two you know i assume above them um and then ucf coming a close second so if georgia tech can be that third you know that third team kind of making moves here in the southeast conference I definitely think that they have it. Uh, they have a lot to show, but we're going to take a look and see if we're going to continue the streak of just having the exact same maps. Here we go again. Ancient oh. gone, but Mirage taken out by Georgia Tech, meaning that we're headed to Vertigo on our map pick there for FGCU. But overpass going to be the second pick, and Inferno the decider. I mean, listen, we had we had what we could some differentiation mm -hmm. we couldn't have it all but vertigo <laughs> what do you think about that we see an fgcu uh attempting to pick this earlier on i believe and mm -hmm. didn't necessarily work out against the redbirds but we'll see if that uh you know can be something different this time no this this map is clearly one that they comfortably pick in a consistent fashion so i don't think it's any surprise that we're going to see this once again i really uh, like that they're going for maps like this because it does require people to either ban that against you and leave a weaker map open and if you are able to kind of show your comfort i mean you can take a map of vertigo off of a team that doesn't know how to play vertigo depending on or, or not factoring in the fact that skill level difference uh, it's really exciting to see that there's a team that's picking into this. If, you know, Georgia Tech are maybe better on other maps, but not Vertigo, if they're leaving that out of their pool, and uh, that's not the same case for, for Gulf Coast, uh, it's going to be a worrying factor here for the first map. And it will be. And, I, you know, I, I think that our lack of knowledge on Georgia Tech as a whole is, is what will leave us um asking questions early on um mm. and this vertigo i think gonna gonna really determine things for us here um you know is is it going to be a a situation where where fgcu come out and, and they they smack on on vertigo we know fgcu have played over pass um now they haven't particularly had a ton of success on that map um against the better teams but but again georgia tech lost to uh, to ucf as well you know so mm -hmm. you can't you cannot give FGCU too much trouble because of that. And um, on top of that, you have to ask the the secondary question of um, you know we get to overpass, then you find Georgia Tech winning it. If we head to Mirage, who do you have taking it right in the third? Yeah, so I, I mean in the third, it's going to be tough. I, th I think we're finishing things off on it. Inferno, and that was the map that we saw them play against Lexus 60 uh, in that, that previous week that we watched mm -hmm. them. And, and they did, they looked rather promising. Again, it's always going to be a tough matchup. Everyone was stepping up to the plate. It was some really solid stuff from ISU. And so I give kind of Florida Gulf Coast a, a pass in that sense. I think that they did have some good setup. But overall, I do think that I, I, it's so hard to predict. Florida mm -hmm. Gulf Coast, I, I think, could take this one 2 1, but I almost guarantee a third map in the bound. All righty. Well, I don't know that I'm fully on board there. I think there's a possibility that Georgia Tech takes this in two if their vertigo is mm -hmm. quality, but I think there's an equal chance for FGCU to do it. But we are indeed ready to go with the map, and it's going to be the start here at Vertigo with FGCU <laughs> on the attack. <laughs> And this T side, we know how important it can be to get a good start. Yeah, I mean, this is a great start. I love the profile pictures over on Georgia Tech as well. Got the whole matching profile picture down, Steam Group down, man. Look at this. There they got it go. all over at Georgia Tech, don't they? Listen, I mean, it's 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 not a top school in the country for no reason here. Come on now. Oh, wow. Got to see if... Uh... Got to rep. A I, I'm bit. going. 
I'm going as the antagonist here of Georgia Tech. Yeah, because, I mean, you have to, considering. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have some nice ballots because I think I, I'm really a big fan of Florida Gulf Coast. From, uh, after a, a rough series versus ISU, I do think they mounted a pretty decent fight yeah. considering their opposition. And so we are hopping into the piss round. Pops has been expired. We get canceled up, and we will hop into things here. And look at this, an interesting bit of utility in the hands of Watt. I believe he's dropped over a P250 as well somewhere. Or no, no, he's just invested. That's 400 and 300, so make it at 700. That makes sense. Math is uh, math is a tricky thing on broadcast. Either way, the A-side rush is rolling on off for the side of Florida All Golf. All the damage. Please. That's massive on the grenade. Georgia Tech taking names early. It's KNZ on the site, tapping away. Found that first frag, pushing up there to trade. Is it going to be Glue Gessler who finds that frag? Attempting for the second. Minus with that. Minus and Micah coming in for three or four all together. Micah with three of those. Fantastic start here for Georgia Tech on their opponent's map pick. Oh, I really like that run. I'm already switching sides georgia tech <laughs> looking so good oh, and that no. was that was just super solid the he damage i'm a sucker for he damage on a pistol round man it doesn't get much better than that in terms of reading your opponent's like a book and vertigo one of the easier maps to do that especially if they're rushing you down but man like that that is such a promising start for georgia tech on vertigo it shows that they're ready in this map that yeah that it does right you, you know i i think that you you gotta you gotta give credit where it's due that that early he grenade was so quality and then the patience to follow that up not getting too far to position but hey want to go of coast they're not out of this yet they've got to buy back in and it's a very strong one considering this is only the second round yeah i like it of course that uh that curse of getting bomb plant for cts is that second round buy that's always coming it's inevitable here is spray down range with the mp9 it won't connect but she sure is trying here mine is looking for that and they've stacked up bros have stolen a chance with a flashbang oh but he catches him with his knife out i thought there was gonna be some sort of flash setup but bros of stalling he catches a tying of a lifetime right there and will happily walk away with that frag slow and steady here for fgcu like the boost, I like the idea, but well, I'm not gonna hit the shot necessary to pull that one off. Being said, I was, I was. There's a potential there for the kill in the back. I was waiting on it, but minus. Oh, he wants to go for it. He wants it so bad, but he does wait for the right timing. And oh, that's cash money in the bank there, both for minus and for Micah. The two M's coming up clutch once again. Nicely done. Great work with the MP9 as well. Just shutting that one down. Grabs himself a Galil, drops that one over. He's going to do the uh, the reinvestment into the A1S here, but Georgia Tech are setting themselves up nicely on Vertigo in the early stages, converting that anti-force by. And now they just need to do the same, but this time against lesser weaponry. It's just the Eagles being brought out here. That's going to be, oh, if they continued running, that would have been a lovely name. Oh, man. A good call, though, from FG. I think they heard the bounce, and they were like, oh, 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 oh hold it. Let's just wait. <laughs> but, oh, the follow-up grenades are nothing short of quality. Fantastic work here for Georgia Tech. Their utility usage on point early in this order go. But that, that sort of is the uh, the name of the game, I think, Ooh. for Vertigo. And <laughs> I don't even know how that hits. Oh. Triple R. Oh, what a great shot. That is gross. Yes, that that's a good such one. such a nice win. shot. Jeez, okay. That's a that's good stuff, Triple R. No slow cheese. I, mean, I mentioned Wad was rather promising, but Triple R stepped up to the plate as well. Florida Gulf Coast, this is their map pick, and they are off to that 3-0 start, but now this is their chance to bounce back. They got the rifles being brought out here. Got a lot of utility to work off of as well, and that maybe can be promising to kick things off here, but they're still going to need to find some access points, and you can see that Georgia Tech are respecting their opponents in the sense that they've just got all A1Ss inbound here. Utility off as well, and they're just going for some early air ramp control. I love it. This is great. Hard to see through the fire and the flames, though. It's greatness has found some oh my openings God. there. That's FGCU with the frag. Micah still close by. A bit of a with flashbang, I believe. I'm going to allow for any sorts of openings here. 
TCU. Can they take advantage of they have already got? All back there for Micah Minus as well. The two frags go the way of Jose. As it's three versus three for the retake and low HP for two big players here on FGCU. I mean, this was all uh, the entire time just low HP bars here. Since the start of the round here, but that's a nice boost up from Glue Guzzler who takes a frag back. There's two right around the corner, and he's able to double down with his low HP. Finds two edge shots, playing it to perfection on top of the box. will shut down eventually here, but he's taken enough damage to close that one off. And FGC, they'll pick up a first round in a very convincing fashion, considering the fact that that started things off with nearly four players below 30. Yeah, they, they did a good job of just playing the crossfires, playing the tradable angles, and that first initial frag to deny the retake on the boost was the frag of the round. It turned the mm -hmm. tide. It made it so that uh, Georgia Tech no longer had any sorts of advantages, and you can see the damage being done over the course of these eco rounds. It's sort of a half purchase, but it's a nice little shot there. Needing is Mark Minus with that one frag looking for more. It's a bit of a tough spray, but still going to hit. Three versus three as K and Z is still in position. He just eats that grenade straight in the mouth as he tries for more. It's going to be a Molotov, but he commits oh. the fight. Absolutely outrageous from K and Z, and that allows for Bros of Stalin to get around the corner and find the frag. Georgia oh. Tech back in the driver's seat. Uh, you couldn't ask for a much better play from KNZ, could you? Committing to that fight was all he needed to do, and he really played this round to perfection. Eating the nades, but he commits again. Look at this. He's just I know. a full commitment. He takes his pride in his angle, and man, does he not let it down, man. Truly kills KNZ to close that one out. Great round from him. He's done it all. That's my angle, and no one will take it from me. Oh my goodness, that's uh, Spray Dimage there from Jose Cuervo and Spray on point. Oh, wow. Give him the quad. He wants it. One more for the ace, but it's not going to be easy considering that Blue Guzzler is on the other side of things. B site where he's at, but he squatted out. And uh, he shots. Bros really wants this <gasps> thing, but oh, he's getting knifed. Oh no! Oh, minus. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't even see, see him. I have walls and I still missed it. <laughs> I say I can see all of the radar and somehow Minus has been able to sneak by me as well here. Uh, do I see? No, he's just walked right by him. He's right there. Not even on the screen. Not, no worries at all. He says, hello. And we'll grab that knife kill. That's a lot of extra money. I mean, it's, yes, funny, but also it's an extra, what is it, 1400 in his pockets? Uh, isn't so it 1250? Nice. Maybe. It's a lot of money. I mean, Over a thousand. I don't get too many knife kills. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, I'm the same. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's a lot of cash. That's the point. And minus. He's still looking for more. That nade. Oof, doing some chunk damage there to Terror. I mean, I, finally, they get some answers back in terms of early round damage. But is it enough? Look at this. Set up three players over towards a and they're gonna send a boost over i mean minus you, you almost lock in a kill guaranteed here with these boosts triple r oh hello it's a bit awkward there triple r spots but it's a little too late now the sandbox player is gonna strike but he is good for one and only one here is it's a lot of hp Taken down off of FGC, and that's just the start of every round, it seems. They're forced to fight their way with low HP bars, and it just doesn't seem to work all that often, does it? No, I mean, it's and, and to, the, to the credit of FGCU, it's it's really hard to, to fight back with low HP bars on this map in particular. You have limited areas where you can safely go. You're not going to be nadable, malleable, or otherwise spammable. So, boost coming up. This was so effective last time out, but not not twice in a row. Micah is far too smart for that. Plant going to be faked by greatness. Oh, and he gets the information. Ooh. Looking for it, but, and you know, forced out into the open. And some might say that's a bad play from greatness. I disagree. Greatness has to make a play there. Has to get aggressive. And that's the only mm -hmm. opportunity he has to win the round. Unfortunately, the rotation was just far too quick for Georgia Tech.
Yeah, I mean, you could also get yourself stuck into a, a infinite cycle of faking the bomb point until time eventually runs out. You're exactly right. Needed to make an aggressive maneuver in the crossfire far too strong from Georgia Tech. This is a rather dominant lead from them. Here's uh, Florida Gulf Coast. I don't have a lot working for them. Right now, it's going to be a lot of HE damage, and Jose, he's had so much success as he gets the volley off as well to deter any further aggression. He's going to follow up a flashbang and hang around as he's buying time for rotates to arrive, but he might be able to hold it off himself as they all come around the corner. He's only good for one other, but this is the rotates that I mentioned, and it's going to be more damage. And only a matter of time before Triple R is found. He gets taken down 7 2 1. It's so dominant from Georgia Tech here. Yeah, and this is, I want to reiterate, um, Florida Gulf Coast map pick. So things are looking dicey. That said, I think I, I would call this the comeback map. Um, if there is a comeback map, it's Vertigo. I've seen so many ridiculous comebacks on this one, um, and, and it seems to happen with regularity that I'd never count a team out. Yes, it's for good reason here. Yeah, I mean, one for one trade though over towards the B side, and honestly, I haven't seen too much attention get put over this way. So maybe FGC can make it work over on this side of the map. Although hey, they quickly fall off. You know, it's been a lot of A ramp attempts that have been only just failed on the inbound because of the aggression that Georgia Tech are able to throw off. There've been a lot of mid plays as well on eco rounds, but we really haven't seen too much attention over in the B department, but they are going to go back towards A in the 4v4. Yeah, but this is different. They, they put that attention towards A, uh, and now they're coming back. Though, I mean, they really don't have anyone fooled. Minus with the off in position. That Molly, the timing, it's just truly fantastic. Yeah, couldn't have asked for much better timing. Now, they do have nades for the plant as well. As soon as you hear... Those numbers start to get punched in. It's going to be nades running down range, and you can see that it's not even required a tap of the bomb here. A molly for the site. Googles are on top of it. That's been heard. And it's going to be spammed through the smoke. So many low HP bars. They can't even get a chance here as the op will rain off for one, but immediate trades. And you can see that eventually you're going to have to come to terms with those low HP bars, and that's exactly what happens. Just not enough health to get that round. Not enough health, not enough weaponry, not enough bodies. Florida. This is KNZ's angle here. No, I know. I mean, I, he owns it, like we were talking earlier. Oh, just it's too clean. In, indeed. And the timings on those peaks are, as well, are, they, they look so practiced. That's, that's a player who is used to playing that angle for, you right. know, games and games and games. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd say a good 80% of his kills were uh, from that angle. What do you get? Uh, He's got seven. At least. Five kills at the very least from what we've seen on screen are from that one angle alone. They're mollied out of the position. Jose, he's been so consistent towards mid as well. Uh, his util, in fact, has been outrageous, though. That's a nice shot from greatness. So the two things to note there, number one, that's mid-aggression with with actual weapons this time. That's not something FGCU has shown yet. And mm -hmm. on top of that, it's a big win for greatness. FGCU actually finally winning some mid control off the back of it. So It's not all that often that we see Florida Gulf Coast get an opening frag and not get answered back immediately. So the fact that they're actually in a 4v5... They've actually spread the defense then. Oh, not for long. It's taken down here. They're going to follow it up as well. In towards that B bomb site, there's an op frag back, and we maintain some nice equilibrium here, but they're deterred. They're scared off of B, and instead they change their approach back towards A. Well, A and Z has gotten aggressive. Oh, that's just frustrating. How do you dislodge K and Z now? He's going to play aggressively again. He's already got minus on the side. And that's oh. outrageous from KNZ to push it forward. D w key in that scenario. It's such an uncommon play because of how ridiculous it is. But this was the tide turner right there by Micah. Mm -hmm. Finds that frag. And KNZ not going to rotate till he's needed. Going to put the uh, 
Final couple of frags there down. Nine to one here, Cole. It is, oh boy, it's looking dire for FGCU already. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. This is a map pick as well. And it's very quickly fading in front of their eyes. K and Z plays that round to perfection. Although, once again, it's a man advantage manufactured from Terra in this one. They've got themselves a great start. They just need to make sure that they're able to convert off of it. And they're just going to be followed up mid-aggression here. K and Z looks to take one back, but Terry's good for two now. As he is doing a great job of cracking open the bomb site. That causes some rotates away from mid and towards that A side of things. But meanwhile... That's going to allow for FGC to gather some control over towards mid. And Z out of his spot. He got aggressive. It's minus now. Taking that angle. I'm going to know that somebody's found a way through. Wad with the frag. Tries for the nose scope. Not going to happen. Terra with his third. One versus five. It's Jose Cuerva. And he's gone as well. Terror is just a menace on the site over at a becoming indeed a terror for georgia tech we confirm florida's second round before that 4k as well he's only on one so a good time to come alive for a second round nice impact coming through from him and is that round rep rep Oh my goodness, replicable. That's the question. I don't think that will be uh, available for them. I don't think they'll be able to continue to pull that one off. Although, once again, it's another man advantage that they're able to pull off. Greatness. He finds the opening frag to Jose, and this uh, becomes a little bit worrisome here for FGC. They're, or rather, Georgia Tech, they're able to consistently find some openers here that can be very promising. Make it another. Maybe you can string two rounds like that. Here. Terry gets a chance as well. He's going to find it. Three kills in. And whoa, this might be back-to-back -back flawless rounds from FGC. Yeah, it's looking like it. And and there's a couple of reasons. The last round was all about over overextension, overaggression for Georgia Tech. This round, though, Jose, sure, you could argue that was a little bit on the aggressive side. But everyone else, they were kind of in their own positions. Um, Florida just very well read on those positions ready for them ready for the swings and well now it's sort of final buy time here for georgia tech they don't have enough money to buy two rounds in a row and in fact the, the buy here is is going to be a little bit on the lower side jose having to pick up an mp9 interesting that glue guzzler has an m4a1s not sure that you would want to necessarily have that over the ak but hey yeah, it's, it's uh, certainly interesting to see him grab that in the early stages, although he is trying, maybe trying to make a sneaky play considering his positioning here, not too committed to the aggression over towards B, but is hanging about to try and catch someone off guard. And again, it has kind of come down to some slower plays, but look at that. Some of these slower plays not accounting for that mid-aggression, and why would you, Micah? That's some hyper-aggression right there, and that's... The Biggest off angle from minus. No chance that Triple R can check that one. So B becomes their last ditch effort, and it's looking rather good here. Google is there. Not only does he find the kill, but he finds out where the second player is playing, and there's another trade back. So all of a sudden, you take two away from us, F or Georgia Tech, and we take two great backs as FGC. Oh, what a great Molly that is. Yeah. You kind of, I mean, they had the idea that Micah was close by. Flashbang comes through. It's all about timing here. Is close by on that smoke. It's very dangerous for greatness. Bomb rotating by the looks of things. And it's about how long things are going to take. Now greatness going to get out. Bomb rotating towards A by the look of it. Mm -hmm. And it's a uh, going to be an open and free bomb site. Look at that. Can't see coming in. That flashbang. Does indeed get there. I'm gonna find that frag. It's traded quickly. Minus. It's on the side, and the whiff spray from greatness allows for Minus to pick up another. Georgia Tech. They stop the bleeding for now. Really good fake offered up as well over towards B from greatness. The issue was I don't think his other two teammates moved fast enough in order to take that ground towards A that they needed to close that round out to get 
access towards site and you can see that KNZ's one goal was to cause chaos to cause a delay in FGC's approach towards that A site to not allow for comfortable post plants not even allow a post plant in general and he really succeeded in that since he was able to find a kill as well so good stuff coming through from him once again been rather consistent over on the tech side of things and now we've got some interesting maneuvers with the molotovs and smokes being thrown about here they're trying to take control of the ramp and they've done that quite oh. successfully minus one on earth with that though through the wall wall bang is good and he falls back oh and the molly kill i mean that's over back over at a as well Wad gonna win his duel at mid but he's the only one to win anything at all as now he's forced to drop back down, try and recover this uh, bomb, and well, plant it somewhere. But he's one versus four, needs the ace to win it. He is uh, maybe the most ideal prospect here. I mean, even still, they're all kind of hovering over towards mid, so quick rotates are pretty much going to be uh, making both sight near impossible here. Wad. What do you got for us? Maybe going down would be nice. We're entering into the last rounds, though, and so money's not going to be too much of a factor here. Can't even drop another. So good closer from Georgia Tech. As it was getting a little bit dicey as FGC were starting to string rounds together, it's going to be a gun round, a full gun round, to close off the half, though. So maybe a fourth for FGC will give them more cushion, certainly so, than at a 12 to 3 half. That said, Georgia Tech have three AK-47s to work with on the CT side. That is never a, uh, a thing you want to look down and see if you are uh, the tease. You've given away so uh, so good weaponry to mm -hmm. the CTs. And that's a nice duel by Jose, but it's a good trade. Wad's going to make that work for the four. A really cool lineup right there thrown from Wad. It worked I feel like out. we're seeing some, yeah, a straight towards elevator and a safe throw as well but oh, just barely misses his conversion on the bros of stall and now he's done enough damage to surely take down yeah that's gonna be just a touchdown from Luke Glusler but speaking of touchdowns there's gonna be a great nade thrown back from Micah it's good HE damage as well but you maintain a 3v3 for just a couple seconds longer they're really waiting for that flank to come on through the eventual op shot gets missed making it two misses from Minus, but there's a flank that finally rolls on off. It's KNZ to find the first kill. Mike gonna find the second, and it's Triple R. Needs to find three. And he's one last known KNZ right around the corner. Needs to move on. He needs to move quicker here. And he's gonna spot the shadow, but KNZ is gonna win the fight. And he closes it out a 12th round for Georgia Tech. What a round from him. What a half from Georgia Tech. Oh boy. It's not looking good for your. Uh predictions there bud it's not no i i mean i felt it in round one too it was like oh god these guys know their vertigo they do yeah um and and i mean in fairness we had limited way of i mean no real way of knowing that coming in to this game with uh limited information so george attack a bit of a black box and it feels like florida gulf coast have run straight into their trap yeah i mean it, it certainly seems that way it feels like not only are they throwing some really cool subs but everyone seems so very comfortable in their positions everyone's working as a well-oiled machine here's fgcu they got a chance to do the same with their current positioning they've gotten one tucked in towards sandbags and well, terror is going to kick things off to really cause a lovely distraction here to draw some attention away from the sandbags player and it seems like it's going to succeed greatness not even a concern at the moment no, no problem. And oh, there's an opening. Brosif on towards the B side. That can pull some rotates, but as I say that, Darrow with the frag. Uh -oh. Brosif has some second there on the entry towards B. Triple R gonna find another. The ball's planted, but I mean, this is a two versus three, and as you see, you are in the favorite position, but they, they are far away from the site. Brosif needed to hit some of those shots, I think. In order to find this opening, and yeah, that's going to be an overwhelm. Georgia Tech, they uh, had a good idea, but Florida Gulf Coast found so many frags there on the exit of A that things just didn't work out. I truly cannot believe the success as well that was 
able to be found there from Georgia Tech, though. I mean, all things considered, that one probably shouldn't have even been a bomb plant, but Rose of Stone cracking open that B bomb slate as the Lurk play really changed the opportunity for Georgia Tech in that round on Florida Gulf Coast. A much needed piss round. I would say that's almost required considering they're on that CD side. In Georgia Tech, with that bomb plant, you know, oftentimes we do see those second round buys come through. They're playing a conservative game given their lead, and I, I don't really hate that all that much. No, I, I'm a fan. Play it, play it safe. There's no reason to take risks here. You've been winning in these, uh, you know, gun rounds the whole game. And, well, maybe you can pick up a pistol here. As I say that, a tank there on towards wide, and lots of damage as well. Both players on B taken down. Greatness comes through the smoke. Tries for another, but he's blinded back down. Two players down there for Terra. The bomb getting planted, but Terra going to connect third. That timing from Terra really saving Florida in that one. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Terra, much needed recovery. Yes, that was getting very dicey. But, I mean, if you do take a look at now the economy, after playing that conservative round, they're going to have such a good buy-in, and they've done so much damage to FGC that it's going to leave them in, in a, a really disastrous state if they drop this round. You can see that there's a Hamas reinvested an MP9 being brought out as well. It's decent utility. It's very good utility on the CG side. But they're, they're kind of going for broke in a round like this when mm. ideally if you were able to clean up that second round, it would have been much, much more of a reliever. Yeah, you can hardly call this a bonus is really what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. Lots of util, everything looking good. But, you know, a loss here would definitely put some pressure on the economy. And oh boy, goodness, Brosif, he's putting some pressure on the economy necessarily just yet. It's on towards B. He's been fan-freaking-tastic here on towards the O's B openings. Just an op on the side. Or, sorry, that's an M4. My apologies. Like an op through the wall, but greatness goes down and means that it's a four versus two. Is this just a save, Cole? Oh, if even... Oh, my God, Triple R. A huge bailout right there. 2v3 still wouldn't convince me. It's a nade. So very close to catching Terra as well. And yeah, they, they will get out. I mean, that triple R finding that kill might have bought them a lot, so much in terms of what they're going to get in this next round. If he goes down and uh, surely Terra to fall after, it, it would have been a disaster. It would have been such an easy and confident round. But instead, Georgia Tech closed things out. And uh, they do walk away with two guns. But it, it's not going to be much even despite that fact. Not all that much. That's for sure. 13 5 the score now. As, well, patience is key. And a little bit of impatience here for Florida. I can kind of understand the concept, right? You have less than ideal weaponry. And it's it's good close range, so you try and take those close range duels. But, man, when, when you have a player like Bros to just kind of sitting there waiting, it really, I mean, you look silly when that kind of thing happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's an interesting risk to take as well. If you consider the fact that you don't have a lot of wiggle room, you don't have a big lead that you can go for risky maneuvers with. So, you know, in that sense, it is a little bit worrying for FGC. I mean, that clearly did have a game plan, but it just looks so lackluster at the end of the day. Just a bit of confirmation bias as well there. But, well, that's a nice start. Triple R, finding the opening frag and keeping... Uh, attention away from me. Yeah, I mean, I think to give credit where it's due towards FGCU, they definitely have had some good ideas. It's just been these individual plays um, often coming towards Georgia Tech and the such. Lots of uh, utility coming out here at B. Neither player winning their duel. Brosif has just... Dude, I don't know if he just plays retakes all day at this map or what, but he's just <laughs> winning every single aim duel yeah. on the entry. And and when you find double entries for free like this, I mean, that's just how to win rounds 101. He goes down, but it's still three on three. The duel going the way of Jose. There's a molly oh. and a flank. He's going to flash for the flanking player as well. Oh. K and Z. 
That is some beautiful setup. And there we go. 14 on the board. And that is a disaster state in the economy of FGCU. No money. And they're going for a force. They're going for broken this one. No questions about it. I don't blame them. I, this feels... This feels desperate, but it is desperate. You know, you you haven't been winning gun rounds. Granted, you haven't had all that many gun rounds to win. And mm. and so might as well just go for broke. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a rather tough tough call to make, but it, I think it's the only option. It, if you fall into a trap, being down 15 to 5 is, feels near impossible, in my opinion. And uh, due diligence being done, <laughs> not quite enough, maybe, as Mike, you know, he's already available for the trade. So we still maintain that man advantage as they're dropping the pistols. But Goo Guzzler and Triple R, they answer back with two and put the man advantage back into favor of FGCU, but not for long. It's so chaotic. It's so back and forth here as Terra is looking to gain his ground. And he finds a running AK headshot straight onto Terra, putting Goo Guzzler in an impossible situation. Reloads on the most unfortunate timing as he tries to find Micah. Micah playing a more passive approach this round. It's allowed Goo Guzzler to sneak his way into this maze going towards Elevator now. And I think he might have a chance to catch one off guard here. Jose, or rather Micah, playing a rather risky game here. Oh, he spots him though. Yep, that's going to be the closer. Yeah, that was scary all the way through, but ultimately, George Attack and, and in particular Jose winning that round out, that running AK headshot, that was the key. Man, it, it looked to me as if, if Jose wasn't running there, that was going to be a, a a headshot the other direction. That that was what I, I kind of had the read. But three Famases, one Deagle, and a Scout. That's all that stands between Georgia Tech and the first game victory. This is looking like it might be all over too quickly, but as I say that, Claude finding an open. And it's with one on the trade, but he's got a second two on the 180. Nasty flick. Yeah, I mean, that is a really evident of the firepower that they have. You can see that they're not very happy about that whip, and I don't blame Terra for being upset about dropping that frag. It's the scout to try and claw things back. It's a chance on the KNZ, but they're running out of opportunity. They're running out of chances here. Honestly, Vertigo looks to be like a quick wipe as it will be a shot through the smoke. Opportunity opened up for Wad. Oh. A nice head shot in from Greatness, putting Minus in the 2v1 situation. Four kills required as he catches the head shot angle, but he can't find the finishing blow on a Wad, and they will hold on for just one more round. That's all. That's what it's going to have to be. One more round after one more round for Florida to pull this one back. And the, the amount of rounds necessary here as we take a look at this outrageous flick. Oh. Terra had a FAMAS, right? If I'm not mistaken. And, uh, I mean, listen, some would say the FAMAS is bad. I think that's definitely one of those situations where... You definitely would want a different gun, but yeah, oh, a bit of a whiff, no doubt, from Terror. For sure. And, well, there's an opener. Okay. You mentioned the effective B-side openings there, and it, it's going to be some ambitious spam. Eventually, the tracers are found, and it's good at damage onto two players. Rosa Stalin and Jose Cuervo, they're both taken down low, but oh, spam, the smoke's good as well. Nades are good. Jumps are failing from Terror, and they're running out of opportunity. The nade's going to track him down and hunt greatness. And it's the flank being expected as well. That can really just close things out. KNZ finds his frag, and Terror, he's the last man standing, and not for too much longer. Terror finds one as it's Micah going through the smoke. Maybe an opportunity. Molly for the bomb, though. So bomb defusal becomes an impossibility here as he's trying to find his way around the corner. He's going to stick it inside of the flames. There's one kill in and a four stick. He's running out of time. He's trying to play around it. It's a 10 second of use. He knows it's over. Florida golf close. They drop it. And Georgia Tech move on with 16. Oh, man. Florida. You got to feel a little bit bad for them right there. They, they just could not find an opening.
And we have returned for what could be our final map of the day. Georgia Tech taking a dominant one-sided victory over Florida Gulf Coast in the map number one on Florida Gulf Coast pick. But, well, it might be a heading towards the end of the day for Counter-Strike. But Counter-Strike mm. in general sure is heck ain't over. CSL Esports and Prize Picks are running a 25 thousand dollar collegiate tournament later this month it's october 23rd and 24th for the regional qualifiers and then playoffs the 30th and the 31st if you want to uh, take a look registrations open now you can head over to cslesports.com for more details and information that's cslesports.com for details and information so cool we are uh, headed in towards the uh, what is going to be Georgia Tech's pick. And I I have to be honest with you. I don't have a lot of faith, especially because we're headed towards overheads. Yeah, no, it's not looking pretty. I'll be honest with you. It not only looked like Georgia Tech were very, very prepared and with really, really well drilled on Vertigo, it's just everything was looking promising. There was individuals stepping up to the plate. You can see that's quite evident. And, and and both halves it was just a full team effort for them to get the job done and that's i imagine just going to look even better on their map pick i don't think anything is going to change we're going to see the same sort of counter strike the same sort of you know good team play and and everyone stepping up to the plate and so fgcu they're going to need to show us something different they're going to need so either some more firepower a, a individual step up or, or something along those lines because they just look so gassed in the start of that round yeah, and I don't know if I agree with the term gas there because it seemed like there was some moments that they were able to pick up the pace, but it just seemed that they were being outmaneuvered in in many ways. Um, you know, it wasn't that they they came in at a disadvantage because they, they aren't playing up to potential. I just think that Georgia Tech might be that little bit better um, on the yeah. on the overall level. That being said. This is the opportunity for Florida to show us otherwise, to send us towards Inferno, which is our map three. Uh, but we are, are going to be towards overpass here for now. Of course, the good news for Florida, they get to start out on the CT side, and that means that they have a little bit of an advantage there. I just don't know if that's really going to be enough of an advantage to get them over the edge, particularly because... Georgia Tech, I mean, they did fine on both sides, no matter mm -hmm. what, over on Vertigo. But with that being said, Cole, we're ready to hop in towards the game, and it is underway. I mean, the big kicker here is, I mean, if you see the same sort of T-side maneuvering coming through from, like, the likes of Bruce of Stalin or, or anything like that, where you can just continuously see openers, then it's going to be a quick day at the office here for Georgia Tech. An opportunity and a nice clothesline from Terror, but an immediate trade. The triple con setup could catch him off guard, but KNZ is an absolute menace, and he finds all three. He just does it over and over again. Connectors, his domain, and you're just living in it there. As the disbelief comes through as well in the chat. <laughs> oh, my God. It is... Oh, wow. The triple oh. cons are rather common common strategy on uh i think we even saw it in the last uh yeah we did last of three as well yeah we did yeah i i think a little bit of outrage coming in there <laughs> yeah. maybe a little bit misplaced uh, but no right. nonetheless uh, um you know good read but i guess reads don't matter when your bullets hit the face of your opponents quicker than you can shoot yours Florida goes, Gulf goes down by one here. It's going to be buying and three AK-47s, a very aggressive purchase. Not a lot left in the in the tank here, but considering that they are feeling confident, I guess this is what Georgia Tech have on offer. Pretty decisive water control here from Khan. That's a touchdown. Oh, no. It, I don't know. If there was a player bear, but I don't think that they landed. Jumping with the map 10, but they can't find the entries, and they're getting shut down on the inbound here. A lovely crossfire. All three players from Catwalk get shut down immediately. Can't even get a chance, and now guns can be recovered from the B-side players. They haven't done it just yet. They can be. There's an option there as the rest are maneuvering out of the monster tunnels a chance for some damage to be done but they're getting shot down the deagles are running out and this is a nice look to fgcu 
I'm, I'm, this is a bad, hor horrible play here for Georgia Tech. They got to take responsibility for this, considering. But maybe this can be clutched back out. An AK-47 maybe to be recovered by Minus. Not too sure he's got the... Had a flash, and that's gone towards A. I don't know if that's really going to convince anyone, though. One player getting aggressive there on water. Not going to catch Minus, though. So this, I am. this creates two one v ones This is now possible. Ideally, he'd won an AK, but he's not going to get that. He's going to get the plant, though. Is he going to be able to win the 1v2, though? Oh, he's walking back. He's turned. Well, he's going to find a freebie right there. Easiest kill of his life is now the AKs get to be retrieved. This is a huge round. And I, I'd have to agree with you. It's rather egregious what exactly was in store uh, for Georgia Tech in that round. Uh, it was pretty ugly. Obviously, that MAC-10 getting sent in first, but the follow-up just was not there. I, I like the start of that play. It wasn't a bad idea. They send the MAC-10 in to spot up the stack, but the lacking of trades that really came through, it's a worrying factor for Georgia Tech on the T side, and that gives a great opportunity for FGCU to find an answer. Well, and, and further, let me let me add to that, saying that there's no reason why the second part of that two-pronged attack doesn't come in. It's just right. late. Um, and, and if the plan was not to be two-pronged, then, then that is that's just a bad plan. <laughs> right. You know, so nonetheless, Florida taking advantage of Georgia Tech's misfortune and malfortune as uh, it's just a eco round. Georgia going to give up the entirety of this and well, the Google Hustler has all the information off the back of those footsteps. Oh, they're going connector. P90 is there to meet them. Triple R. Can he find the old no. five? A chance with the P90A. She's chasing him down with the USP. Give oh, it. my God. He's sweating right now. Nah, he's no. going to fall down. Lovely stuff from Triple R. That was too good. It was, I saw it coming as well. Triple R, P90, no armor on your opponents. You couldn't ask for a better setup right there. This is the only place the P90's ever going to shine. <laughs> and he makes it work beautifully. ESPS to follow up. Nice shots. Minus down. Two to one. Georgia Tech are going to be a buy in, but. Sort of limited on the util. You can see that Molotov gonna hold off any sort of a push towards water. In my brain, I'm just thinking about how if he had a bison, he would have made so much money right there. True. But more aggressive maneuvers with the P90. Doesn't spot anything out. There's one tucked in towards Joseph Stalin. A perfect timing. One and two. We talk oh. about this man with his entries. He does it once again. He's always in a great spot here. Uh, eventual trade back from greatness. But Joseph Stalin waiting patiently is going to be taken down as well. Two kills back is a good answer for the CT side. But still 3v3 evened out with a minute to maneuver around for Georgia Tech. FGCU answer with greatness. Two frags for free. 3v3. As oh, Kansi seems to have an idea that there might be a player close. Flashbang. Oh, not a flashbang. My apologies. Thought it was. Kansi has walked past the player here. He's found the oh, opening wow. a dink onto Kansi, but now it's all about timing and he's going to go down. Now, Wad's position being well known. And this. This sort of makes it difficult, I think, for Georgia Tech. They have to they have to split the site, play for the one v ones, and well, that makes life difficult for Wad. Yeah, he's gonna have to tap the bomb. No kid as well. This is a ten second defuse, planted for bank and both players' position and the perfect post plant. So unlikely that he'll have a chance here. It doesn't even tap the bomb yet. Spots out one. I think Minus might have even gotten a glimpse of him as well. And it, it's Micah to find it. And a good answer back right there. It was, I feel like, mo mostly off the back of Bros of Sawn. Huge round right here. And I feel like it's just so common. He can do it so consistently. His multi-kill potential is absurd. And then K and Z with this nice little bit of crosshair placement. They get the access into a, a great round from Georgia Tech, and it's honestly to be expected. Yeah, and I will add some poor positioning from Florida in that round, too. Really allow for, for Georgia Tech to get right back in there, but nonetheless, it's going to be a uh, very important round this time out. The reason being, 
Florida, they have the weaponry. Oh, AWP is out as well, and Greatness finds the victory. It's Brosive going down. And he and Greatness is low because of that, but that's okay. Oh, well, it's not going to find that. Mika gets into this position for free, but I don't think he can find much out of it. The real value is that they leave a bit of pressure that might have came from Connector. Not have to worrying about that. Is is but great kill from Wad. Nice and clean. The angle being held, and he makes it a double. Flash being set up to get a third here. He can't find K and Z, but he's done his job in terms of just gathering info and finding frags as well. He's done both of those here as K and us. K and Z rather he sticks around for just a little bit longer. But Wad seems like he's ready for it. Ran out of what? ammo. Was that out of ammo? That's crazy. If so, K yeah, he Z. only had one bullet. Oh, oh man, wow. that's frustrating. <laughs> oh, overall though, he does a good job. Does Wad. And uh, does greatness to open things up. 3 2 for FGCU. You can see the four spy coming in here for Georgia Tech. Wonder if there's going to be a bass B execution. I don't know that I would like that considering the very limited utility, but that's what it's shaping up to be based on these initial pushes. Yeah. Control from Brosa Stall. I mean, he's going for that play once again, but it's a much different result. Terra with two and greatness to find the third there as they get dismantled. Brosa Stall, and once he starts to fail on the entries, it seems like Georgia Tech, they don't have a lot in terms of what they can gather in their T side. I mean, they, they were pushing through a smoke, of course, but water control at the moment seems to be off limits for them. Certainly in the, in the prior couple of rounds here. That said, you know, they, they had some success before that. Jose Guerrero, the final player left alive for Georgia. A kill or two would be nice, but, well, I don't even know if you can find that. What's that one? That's Wide, who had plenty of health. He's going to find the frag. Flawless victory there for Florida. This is Georgia Tech. They forced spot in the last round, and you know what that means. It's eco time. Zico time in now Florida Gulf Coast. They have a chance to gather up a bit of economy to their name as well. Up against five Glocks, I'd have to imagine is how how this round is going to end. That means that if they clean it up, obviously in good fashion, which they should, it'll be a lot of ec extra boost in terms of what they can gather in their economy here. Triple R though, a lot is around the corner. It's one kill in, but that's all he'll find. Sprays missing as well through the wall. But greatness will not. It's only a single frag for him and two kills. I'd have to consider a minor victory there for uh, Georgia Tech. I mean, I might even call that a major victory with two, with five Glocks. I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I think that's probably best case scenario that you could honestly find with five Glocks. So, those small victories, though, not going to necessarily mean too much. Money's still healthy for Florida. And with that, I like the terror has consistently been throwing that smoke. Just, you know, adds to the pressure that Georgia's going to feel trying to push forward. Oh, Hello. and that's aggressive here for Wad. And finding out minus for free. Fantastic start. It really is much more clean CT side from what I'm gathering from FGCU, two players fast towards long just to gather up a world of information and to find the opening frag. They've sent in Watt as well, a little bit deeper, gathering up more control here to over towards the A side of things. He's in a, just a winning position right now for the entirety of FGCU. And a boost attempt won't find anything as of right now. No one peeking into that. And so really good stuff all about here from the CT side. Oh. Oh, he spotted him. Yeah. Depending on timing here, I guess one might be found, but not a lot of time left on the clock. 45 seconds, and I'm, I mean, that's so very far wide from where he should hypothetically be. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to contend with. Jose 
Took in the wrong direction. He's got pressure from both angles. He's gonna win that duel despite the dink. On the site. Odd. Coming back around. He takes it on Jose. Two for two. As this is a winnable scenario now. Plant going down. Adam McGee gets caught out. That's massive. Now it's gonna be Wad who's got an ace. He's on to four here. One right in the pit close by. Smoke for the bomb. And now it's going to trigger a push from it. The opposition. Bros of Stalin going to move around the pit. Catches him with a nade out. And the fifth kill does not come through. Instead, Bros of Stalin takes it away from him right there. And I mean, it was a, just a, such a nice effort. Look at this entry, though, from Jose. Oh. That is disgusting. Nothing that Triple R could have done. He did his damage, but this is the last finishing blow right there. Just an unfortunate scenario. Huad didn't have enough in him. He did so much, but it just couldn't close out. Frustrating round for Wad. I mean, he, did, he you know, like you said, he just did everything he could. It was not enough. This is a round, and, and a timeout, sort of fair for Georgia Tech. Because if you look at the money, I mean, it, it's, it's very poor. It goes down to a 1v1. Sure, the bomb gets planted, but your loss bonus is not quite maxed, considering you won the round. So it's going to have to be two max tens. How do you best utilize those weapons? The normal answer is going to be pushing towards B, but I feel like Florida really had that on lock, and really the only reason that Georgia Tech won the prior round is off the back of some fantastic entries, some, some good defense, and a big clutch. Yeah. It wasn't easy the way they want it, but they do convert. And so now we're back to a more passive approach. I say that, but over towards Hayes where all of the aggression lies. They've already pushed their way into T-spawn. They're going down the connector ladder. They hold Jose Rivo in a passive position, and it works wonderful for him. He's able to find that kill on the wad. One sneaking up the ladder as well. And this is going to catch him off guard. It certainly is. It's not enough damage, but the MAC-10 damage that he does and the information that's gathered is so very valuable, and it allows KNZ to sneak his way on towards A. Yeah, KNZ's living free as he likes, and he can just sort of oh. nest himself in the back there. And, and wait for rotation. We could even strike towards B as well. I think that's where he's heading. Oh, yeah. It's certainly a possibility, actually, considering the rest of the T side. That definitely seems viable. And indeed, you're absolutely right. And they're not ready. They have no mm -hmm. idea. Triple R is caught with his pants down. Greatness. Well, he's certainly got it. And well, I thought that was greatness for a moment. It's actually Terror, who's got a double. Now it's one versus two. Two players who are very split off. One player trying to get away. That's Terra. So now on the 1v1, it's Guzzler who's very low. But oh my goodness. Micah. Being tagged down. That nade could have been the end of things. But in fact, it's not. It's all about the 1v1. The duel coming through. Two HP in the reload. Oh my goodness. So very close. Oh, he's just waiting for him to drop. Good play. He knows you'll hear the audio. There it is. Time's taking down. He doesn't have a kit. No kit. And look what Mike has done. He oh. snuck around him. Oh, what a perfect play from Mike. A high pressure, but he does not crumble at all. And 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 honestly, that's gotta be that's gotta be the only smart time I've ever felt that it's been like, you know, throw a smoke, just sit inside it. <laughs> you know? Where it's like sort of obvious, but because of the, the placement of that smoke and, and how Micah played it, man, that was indeed brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, that was perfect. So much impact in that round right there from Micah. And it does seem to see or just feel like uh, there's a couple of these lost clutches. How does that even connect? He was running and gunning with the deagle. That's not too often that you see that, right? But it is going to be 1v4. I mean, at this point, you got to run away if you're blue, blue guzzler. He's got a chance to take a couple pop shots. So he's just given up his life for, for pretty much free. I mean, maybe the argument is you, you want to win some economy back and you're going to be on a save. Nah, no, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. I'm 
reaching there, but mm-hmm. regardless, eco time for FGCU for Doigles and P2 Fitty. See it? I still like it though. I still like the dog Doigles call. Very solid. I'll always, I'll always be a fan of that one. Glad to hear it. Let's see if FGCU become Triple fans boost. here. Yeah, this is. Oh, I love it. Oh, you spotted him? No! Oh no! What an adjustment from Brosif so quickly too. That's brutal. And they've got a little multi-pronged approach towards the connector attack. It's K and Z. A lovely spray transfers good for the second, but just barely holds on for dear life. As it does leave E very vulnerable. They know that at least two other players were committed to that boost over towards that B bomb site. And you can see that Mike has taken some liberties in that sense and has found the frag on the greatness, making it a triple R round. Uh, four kills required at this point. And I think at the very best he'll grab Maybe uh, a kill or two to keep that money honest here. It'd be nice, you know, one kill, honestly. Mm -hmm. Low HP player on the flank. Scan Z. I I think he just gave away his position (laughs) with the uh, spray there. A little graffiti off. Yeah. Say hello. I'm here for you. Mm, You can't fall off at this point. I mean, you're right. He really can't. Triple R, of course, has no idea that, you know, KNZ is so very low. And it looks like he'll continue to be clueless because KNZ takes a very nice shot, dispatches him with ease, and Georgia Tech retake the lead. You see adjustment jumping up. I, I think he just barely saw him. And the, the little movement that's required of you in terms of how triple boosting works i think he actually got forced off of the boost and fell off couldn't find the adjustment in time and that's that's rather brutal right there so that, that could have been a great start in terms of trying to close out eek around catching them off guard it would have been lovely I, I was a big fan of that movement did you see that nade that's super cool yeah oh Rose my god doing Bruce of things it's only a one for one trade though in a gun round I think that's a big victory here for Georgia Tech 2v2 two two on the sites 2 towards A 2 towards B for now it's nice opening. I mean, he's so very consistent with the openers putting it into a 4v4 like you mentioned not the end of the world and you can see with the limited map control that as well from FGCU it's a little bit worrying. Full bathrooms control, full long control is in favor of Georgia Tech at the moment. And an A bomb set execute is going to be so lethal. Molly towards the back of Dice. They spotted out one towards Bank. Shots are being rattled off. Mike is drawing attention away from the real prog of approach here. Towards bathrooms. Three players heading in that direction. Knights are out here. And Micah is able to entry with explosiveness as he finds two. One through the smoke. He can't find a third, but his teammates close by for the trade. Kane and Z will answer back and triple R. His footsteps have been heard, and the retreat's already been made here. They're going to fall off and just play the post plant. They'll play the 2v1 and, and to perfection here as well. Indeed. 1v2, triple R. Is it all to do? My bomb's ticking. Got to get a move on. Let's have a kit. That's the bomb. Looking for the peak, and wow. No peak at all. A big boost now. Oh. And that is a nice frag there for Minus. The boosts are outrageous, and Wad probably should have had that one. 100%. Yeah, he needed to if they wanted to win that round. Here's the boost. I think that Minus was able to peek around that edge just enough to see no one was diffusing in that initial tap. And oh. that's just so very cool from Georgia Tech. There's no possible way you can win that round if you're triple r i mean you, you just got to get lucky spot the boost and, and tap the guy that's like the best that's the only way you can win and that's like i said lucky oh there you go again bros have stolen it's off the back of a nice flash though from jose gotta give credit where it's due that utility has been quality towards me Yeah, it's, it sure has. Good setup right there from Bros of Stalin. And it does seem like this adjustment to the fact that FGCU are happy pushing water every single round they can. 
Last two players positioning towards B, and they're just going to take the fight to them. Could be like, get a bit of dicey here. The Deagles are good for a damage, but it'll only be that one kill in. And now taken down. Georgia Tech, no troubles in that half buy coming through from FGCU. There's a big buy coming up. And the, the reason I say it's big is really it's big for Florida and that they really need to win. Um, also, I don't know if I'm seeing the same thing you're seeing. Was that three ops on the CT side? I mean, you know, we're talking like train, cobble maybe. I could get it, but I'm not on this map. Oh, Florida getting spammed down. Oh, There's no. Those... One op dropped, but the op does answer back. Greatness and that water aggression. If you're going to find Brosive Stalin with an AWP, then get all the ops you can get, I guess, as their logic. And they've done just that. They've had an answer. Brosive Stalin has not been able to find the entry as he's done so very often. They've sent Blue Guzzler back towards A to work this position, but he is a little bit solo here. He doesn't have much in terms of rotation, so he's going to have to do a whole lot in deterrence of this attack coming through from GT. Oh, would have been nice to find that one. But Blue Gussler are not going to hit it. And that molly, all of those mollies, I should say, going to dissuade him. Triple R tries for the swing. Oh, towards Optimus, it's not successful. Ooh, spotted. Ooh, it's spotted. The damage being done through the wall to save. This feels like a save call. Has to be so low HP, and like I said, this round important because of the economic repercussions and the long term damage done for Florida. And oh, look at Midas! Midas, he's ready, he knows what's going on, he knows and he's ready for this play. And he's oh. got the frag, fantastic shot there for Midas. He's looking for more, and he's oh, got no. it. No hunting, AWPs, there are no more. Nine to five. As Georgia Tech confirming more and more here at the back end of the half. And Micah rubbing salt in the wound there as well. Just saying, you, let, you all like ops, huh? And they sure did at one point. They did when Greatness was getting that one frag that they were able to grab in the round. But other than that, they get nothing out of it. And they don't take any of them into the next round. Instead, they've got three from Osses. And that's a much different buy up here. Yeah, I think some frustration here in Florida Gulf Coast, to be entirely honest, but I can't blame them. It, it's frustrating if <laughs> you're playing against this sort of, like, you, you buy three ops, you, you make the massive investment. You think, okay, this is our time. This is where we'll turn it around. Not only do you not do that, but on top of that, you attempt to save, and you can't even choose just that. It's been frustrating. Those two frags are big. They allow for an upgrade for greatness. This duel going its way as well. Showing off the greatness that he indeed does have. Who's in Cuervo down? Two versus three. I won't lie, though. I'm surprised that Jose Cuervo did not realize that there's a play along considering that his teammate just died recently. Now, there's going to be Rosa Stalin moving forward. The long flank should take him care of him soon. Triple R. I was in bed to rights here. Two bullets, all that's required into the head of Bros of Stalin, making it all onto the back of Minus here. Position unknown still, but eventually they might find him out. Peep through, coming through. Long greatness. He's good for the 3K. He's good to close that round out for FGCU and give them a little better half. 96, you know, avoiding double digits for Georgia Tech it is something to uh, write home about for sure. Close game, 9-6 the half. Georgia Tech are in control right now, but 9-6, I mean, you know, that's just a pistol victory, and you're right back in things. This is uh, very much a closer game, despite it being Georgia Tech's pick. We'll have to see if the CT side tails a different tail, but for now, Florida very much in this thing and looking to send us towards Inferno. Definitely does look a, a bit more confident, doesn't it? They did show 
little more signs of life. Maybe as a result of not getting to play too many CT rounds, but that's a nice start. The B250 does some brilliant damage there. Bros of Stall and trying to find a trade, but a bomb site, call it compromise there as they do equalize into the 4v4, but they are forced to play this post plane, and the aggressive control being taken is so promising. Triple R finds a kill as well. Molly out from Jose, and he'll sit and burn, and he will go down, but he's done his <laughs> job, and then some. Okay, Rosev. If there's anyone who can clutch this, it's Rosev Stalin. He's got the first. Looking for more. One towards Bank, one towards Optimus, and, well, greatness. He's been the player to watch out for on the behalf of Florida all game long. Continuing to be that player there in the pistol round. 17 and 11, topping the scoreboard for the entire server. That's that's impressive. Super impressive right there from Greatness. He has been the man to get a lot of multi-frags on the CT side, and it's all about that. If you can grab two kills before you go down, and, and Greatness seemed to do that in such a consistent fashion as well. Here is full USPs out. Georgia Tech feeling rather confident with the fact that they do have a comfortable lead, and they will get chewed through. This is a clean eco round. Anti-eco run, rather. Victory from FGCU that they're able to gather up here. That's good. I mean, that's to be expected, but it's, it's good that there was no no stumbling. All right? No funny business. None whatsoever. And with that, Georgia Tech, they buy in with their guns. But here's the problem. There's still four Mac 10s and there's three players without head armor. So... Those back tents are still very deadly, even at distance. Yeah, this is exactly right here. Now, Jose Cuervo, he's got the A4. Rocket on off. Flashbangs are going to be good, but he's got 30 bullets in that. He can really spam for all, all day. He gets stuck behind the pillar, and the damage isn't good enough with the MAC-10s. No headshots have rolled on off just yet. Eventually, Wad will find it on the KNC, but it's only two kills in with that bonus round. Now, it's a bit of damage there coming through from FGCU, but that one pretty dominantly went in favor of Georgia Tech and the B rush gets squashed before it ever gets started. And part of the problem there, I think, for, for uh, Florida spacing, their trade's just not possible because of poor spacing on those entries. That, it's double digits for Georgia Tech. They buy back in. It's an MP9 for KNT, but otherwise quite healthy on the economy and a whole lot more head armor. This time it's sort of irrelevant because there's five AKs. On the other side. Oh, spam nearly connecting onto Triple R's head as well, but narrowly avoids it. So it's just a bit of HP taken off of him, and right now, it does seem like they're working the map in a pretty good fashion here. You got Terror, making sure you get, can gather some bathrooms control in the early stages, and maybe tempt. Uh, a side execute wouldn't be a bad idea from FGCU considering the current positioning from Georgia Tech they're actually kind of giving up more control over towards A they are for now but sometimes that's okay it just kind of depends on how you're set up on the site right now it's two towards A three towards B with a quick rotate in position spam from Jose, not gonna connect. And this jump spot, really not found anything just yet. Greatness was meant to throw a bit of a fake, but he's not gonna be able to do that. Lined it up by is minus. Opening there is good for Terror, but on the site, it's only a one for one for Brosif. So it's three v three here, Cole. Big round. He went on the aggressive here. He's good for one, and he dives out. That's key as well. Staying alive, not allowing a trade. He's caused attention to be drawn his way, and eventually Micah has an answer for him. But it's still two more around the corner, and they're getting around him. Micah forced to tap the bomb, forced to take the fight. Bathrooms. He's able to nail the first headshot, and he's going to fully stick it. He's oh, going to try to go for the defuse. He has it peeked around the corner and just barely misses it. Wad saves a day, but it was seconds away from disaster for FGCU. Oh, not seconds, milliseconds. That's how close it was. Take a look at this and look how close. Literally less than one. Point oh. two two six. That was the number. Golly. Oh my goodness. 
And look what it's done to Georgia Tech, man. You got to give credit to KNT. I mean, that's that's probably the right play. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to call the right play there, but it certainly was not the wrong play, and he definitely had a good shot. Jose opening duel. KNT hits another one blind. Maybe looking for more, but the sprays are good. And it's still on the site. He can deny this plant, but doesn't quite hit the shots. One more deagle coming in, but that's going to be denied as well. It's tied up here. Florida, they want oh, they want Inferno, and they want it bad. Looking much better here over on Overpass, which is an interesting side. Vertigo, it did seem like they were just outclassed in every sense from Georgia Tech, but Georgia Tech struggled a little bit. Some of these clutches, when they don't go their way, when they're falling in the hands of FGCU, it does seem like they're struggling. And even in their T side, Georgia Tech won an impressive amount of clutches. Uh, still, they're holding on to those four V2s. And long term, when we come back to it, if Georgia Tech ends up winning it, we can blame it on that. But for now, FGCU, they're still converting. And another B rush is in play and pretty much giving up control. KNC is good for one, but immediate trade comes on out. And so B bomb site becomes compromised, an issue for them to try and solve. It's great damage, but Watt has found a kill over towards the short side of things. Eventual frag comes through from heaven as well. Mike could try to fight his way into this site, but it's just getting his utility belt down at the moment. Yeah, but it looks like a fallback here. Florida, they don't want any part of this. Maybe they do. Maybe a bit of a fake. Mike is still standing stalwart, not going to give anything up. In fact, they're getting aggressive. A very aggressive push. I'm not sure that I love that, uh, that decision making. Push comes through. It's Terra with the frag. It's all on to minus. He's got the op. They're not going to quite know he's got this op here. Seems as if they definitely are avoiding the possibility. And unless they're gifted a, a, a kill here, I think minus probably has to save. 100%. E rush looking good for FGCU. That's the key right there. Continuously hit B. But not only that, they really uh, adjust nicely with the fact that when they enter into that 3v3 and allow for greatness to retreat with bomb in his control, they kind of cause some serious issues in Georgia Tech and how they're going to play around this round. You mentioned that you didn't like that B side aggression, and, and it was a little bit worrisome there considering the positioning of, of FGCU. But. It, uh, it's shaping up to be maybe Inferno in the cards here. Minus is able to walk away with that op as he gets shot. But FGCU take the lead back. I do indeed. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, quite yet if this is Inferno, but it certainly is a, a start to that conversation. Mm -hmm. Of course, going to get another save here our Georgia Tech. This, uh, this AWP would be, you know, it'd be nice to find a couple of kills, keep everyone's economy pretty reasonable, and looks as if they might have a chance, considering that Florida are headed towards A from now. I could go use the 5-7. Brought out some information. That smoke goes down courtesy of the T's, and well, it's going to be a little bit of a waiting situation. A little big missed op shot there for Minus. That was a great opportunity. Failed out. Oh, hey, he misses his second one as well. The op gets dropped immediately here, so it's on to the pistol's backs to get anything done. And so far, they are doing their job at the moment. Not quite, at least. More damage maybe in the cards. It's a nice stink. And they're able to find the kill as well. K and Z, some crispy shooting as all three players looking to make their way in towards this retake it's still planted in a good fashion it's going to be hard to get this post plant taken care of one towards long but the ops been retrieved here that chance for the trades pistol can't do enough damage and the peak comes through jose is good for another but that molotov towards bomb that might as well call it quits at the moment here yeah run the other direction save get out of there i think that's what georgia tech need to be doing and yeah they quickly make the decision to do just that. Jose is going to certainly be out by the time that slows with the AWP, but yeah, most of the same. AK in hand. I think that's uh pretty good for Georgia Tech for an eco. They get three kills. They get two big weapons and an op in particular. 
and an AK-47 on the defense, really, really strong. Yeah, I mean, they do. They have a great buy-up, and, and this would be the time to get things started for Georgia Tech on their CT side. So far, it's been rather lacking. I can't seem to find it. It's just polar opposite to their CT set on Virgo, where it was a unified effort. Another B rush inbound, and they're going to struggle, it seems, once again. But it's a great kill. It's a great start off from Jose. Ground is being gained, and it's problematic sprays. That might be the death of them. More trades back and forth, but it's still two very low HP bars that you have to worry about on the side of FTCU. Although once they gather sight, it does seem like they're able to play these pose plant situations rather nice. A flank rolling on off towards Monster is being somewhat held from the likes of Terror. But it all comes down to timing. Will he be prepared enough to go for this? The thing is, Kansi is in a really good spot too. There's that shot from Minus you were talking about on the flank. Flashbang going over. Blood's in position. John taking that frag one for one. Now it's the op versus an AK. Low health, honestly, just go for the pistol. Tap of the bomb. That's why I'm sticking away. He's going to have to stick it here. Five seconds on the defuse. He's going to be trying with the Glock, and he does hit the shot. It's Luke Guzzler with the frag. Florida Gulf Coast take another clutch in the 1v1, meaning that they're just another round towards Inferno. Oh, they're getting there. One step closer. Now it's good money still out for that save. It's going to trigger a little bit of a half by here. They're not going for a full investment. They're holding on to it. The only rifle being in the hands of Micah, but he's given himself enough wiggle room with max loss bonus to get a good buy coming forward. So I honestly, Georgia Tech, the B rushes are a huge problem. Once these full guns come out, I, they need to adjust. They just don't seem like they're interested in doing so. They, they, are holding on to the same sort of styles, the same sort of individual plays that don't seem to be working. And the confidence shown from FGCU doesn't seem to be ever met with any uh, change of paces. Not for now. That's for darn sure. Nice drag there by Glue Guzzler. Follow up going to be looking better for greatness, maybe. Stalin. Kind of running down a little bit via that Moldov. I mean, two scouts, two MB9s. This is <laughs> sort of silly on a retake, if we're being honest. And, well, I guess the silliness was even thinking about trying to get back in. And see the one survivor of that massacre. Gonna find one frag. Honestly, nice shots from the MP9 at that distance. To find the frag that quickly, but, well, George attack. This is their map, but this is not their map. <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better myself right there. FGCU. All they're doing is is pushing with some nice aggression. It's very quick. It's very fast-paced. And it isn't something that Georgia Tech can answer back from, it seems. The shots that are being hit from FGCU, in terms of even clutches alone, they don't seem to be doing much missing. And if that trend continues, we are going to head to Inferno very quick. Adjustment required. Rose of Stalin down to 1 HP, only to be found out from greatness here as he gets himself another opener. And it becomes a whole lot harder with the bomb site hold. Triple R finds himself a frag as well. And this one, you might call it done and dust, especially if Terra can submit this kill and make it into a 4v2 and he's scared off the angle. Molly goes out, meaning that time is uh, not going to happen. Just for now. Smoke to follow that up. Plant going down on B. This is uh, a really tough retake because, well, there's not a lot of ways back in here. That is the reality. I'm going to try. That's a cheeky angle there from Micah. And yeah, mine is he was long gone from this one. He wasn't even close to going for that attempt. He had the op, he had the valuable weapon, but I don't think he'll have it for that much longer considering we got a flank waiting patiently wad. Well, he missed his opportunity. We'll see if the same case comes for greatness. Turning around, this is a hard angle to work from. He doesn't land an O-scope and that'll be his demise. No weapon saved. And this is Florida Gulf Coast University moving on to match point. I can't believe it. I really thought 
This would be Georgia Tech ending it in two, but mm, not going to happen. At least not by the looks of it. It'd have to be five rounds in a row for Georgia. And uh, as Tara is saying in the chat, I think Georgia probably should be pulling out the playbook here. <laughs> Trying to look up. Okay, so down by five CT side overpass. What's on the playbook? And unfortunately, they're going to be looking at an empty page because there's not a perfect strat for that. Though if I were to pull one out, I think Coach Vincent would say uh, look for an aggressive push towards long or connector. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it has been just uh, B side explosions and just straight up rushing coming through from Florida Gulf Coast that has been working out so well for them. And I, I, I truly don't know what sort of answers can can be found in terms of these timeouts. Yes, you can go for an adjustment, but I feel like in terms of momentum, you've given uh, you've given up a little bit too much. There's no doubt. I mean, Georgia Tech, all momentum has been gone from them. In Florida, they've done a good job of, of bringing this back. It was 9-6 at the half, remember? And here we go again. What adjustments shall be made? What adjustments have been made? Right now, connector aggression for one. V minus. He takes the duel and he loses it. Blue Guzzler didn't even take any damage. Huge whiff from minus. Mm -hmm. It's getting to the point where I, I truly think that Georgia Tech are moving on from this. Judging from that sort of play, there's Jose. And uh, really bad timing there in terms of the jiggle and what he went for there. A nice trade from Micah, but... Judging from that connector push from Minus, it does seem like they're kind of down and out. It, it seems like they are looking for Inferno to save them because it overpass, it looks done and it looks over. I mean, it's three kills away from over. So, let's try with KNZ. I'm going to trade back. Triple R on that trade. Two versus three. It's a nice find, picking up that pistol frag, making this maybe a little bit more doable. Both players for Georgia coming through, same angle. Gonna have to contend with a good crossfire setup, and that crossfire, oh, wow. well, it sets him up for death and despair. It's Florida taking the win on Georgia Tech's map pick, sending us to Inferno. I cannot believe that happened, but man, am I impressed with Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah, it, it looked like they were just bouncing back in such a crazy fashion. Their T side was total lights out. I mean, they found every entry. They found those B bomb site pose plants and yeah. rounds where they realistically shouldn't have won. A lot of clutches were going their way. And I think that Georgia Tech, they did kind of bail out of it mentally once uh, once FGCU were kind of bouncing back, once they were sort of finding those T side rounds because it did look like a polar opposites in terms of the team that we saw in Vertigo versus Overpass. Yeah, I, the other thing I want to note, um, the 1v1s. How many clutches did FGCU have? It had to have been, I don't know, close to close to five or six? Something yeah. along those lines. It definitely was significant. Um, I'm, I'm thinking like five or more. So if those don't go th that, you know, all Florida's way, I mean, and I say all, I think it was probably – Five, five to one, you know, something along those lines, four to one, you know, right. three. It, it was very much Florida sided. If it doesn't go that way, then I don't know that we're really looking at things. But anyway, that being said, we are looking towards a bit of a break here. Going to uh, get map three ready to go. And we'll be catching you on the flip side for the final map of today.
with map number three and oh my goodness florida are making a comeback i'm ready for it despite the fact that i am definitely not fanboying for georgia tech here um as the bias side of the commentary booth i'm really surprised that we're headed to map three but I, I gotta say i'm excited for it cole yeah i mean i did not expect to see a revitalized fgcu in a second map that was not and even in my thoughts here when I was seeing that second half, I mean, I was expecting, you know, Georgia Tech, what are we in, 9-6? And only yeah. one CT round offered up from Georgia Tech in that second half. Polar opposite to what we saw on Vertigo, where we were talking about a 12-3 half. So it poses a question at the end of the day, what 
what we were going for these map picks for it seemed like clearly there was lacking in terms of the b holds over on overpass for georgia tech and clearly a discomfort from fgcu over on vertigo for their t side so it, it gives me a bit of a wonder here but maybe we'll finish in a nice evened out inferno which i uh, expect to see now yeah, I, I mean, I think anything's possible here now that we've made it to Inferno. I think mm -hmm. I said at the outset that um, Florida, you know, I didn't expect them to take a take a victory here, but I, I said that if they do, Inferno definitely could be the way toward that. That being said, um, it really is not at all. I mean, I thought I thought that when I said that, I thought that they would take Vertigo, if mm -hmm. anything. Right, I, I thought that Georgia Tech surely would be confirming their own map pick. But right, uh, it does indeed beg the question: What the heck has happened here? Um, but I think maybe what we are seeing is uh, that same lack of information, at least that we have with regard, with regard to Georgia Tech um, and Georgia Tech towards Florida. You know, mm -hmm. not knowing, you know, just playing into what you're good at. And well, the reality is, what you're good at might just be what your opponent's also good at. So. <laughs> We'll see if Inferno is the same. We have seen Florida play some Inferno before. Um, it was sort of hit or miss. That said, um, we are indeed having a little bit of an issue in the lobby. So we're going to be headed towards one more short little break. Well, as we get that figured out, uh, apologies for the delay. But we'll be right back with you as soon as we can get into game. Alrighty, folks, uh, we have uh, gotten back in and Knife Round has come underway. 
Georgia Tech, and uh, of course FGCU. This is important because this final map, meaning that knife round means who chooses sides. I think that was Georgia Tech who picked that one up. Presumably they would be on the CT side. And that's what it's looking like to me. Yeah, good idea. Take that CD side start. Granted, they're going to need a better defense than what they mounted. We're going to need to take it all the way back to Vertigo if they want to close this one out because that was where the strong suit was. They had such a dominant CT side half. Everyone was getting multi-kills, and it was just totally lacking on overpass. No one seemed to get more than one before there was a constant stream of trades for FGCU. And so now in an adjustment... Oh, Needs to look better, but yeah, nade stack lands for a bit of chip damage, but the B rush, similar fashion to overpass is coming through, but no, they turned their uh, tail back towards A. Yeah, I guess, you know, poke your nose in towards one side, find you don't belong, try another. Bit of a missed shot there from Bosif. Genzi gonna take shots, fall back. Right clicking, all gonna happen. Plant down. Very fast here from Florida. A nice find, good trade though. Vi Vinus. 3v4, the retake. Hard entrance, a bomb site. Very tricky to retake here, but with shots like that, maybe you can get it done. And Minus just runs out of ammo. And they're going to have a nice crossfire here. Greatness has let one slip by. It's a 1v1, a workable one as well. K and Z kit right in front of them. And that's a retake for Georgia Tech in such an impressive fashion of 4v3. And you can thank K and Z for that one as well. You can thank some with shots from the pit position in addition. Because, I mean, I'll be honest, probably should have had that frag there. But nonetheless, yeah. Score one to nothing. And this is a good, good start. For Florida, here we go again. Or, sorry, for for Georgia Tech, but here we go again with Florida on the force buy. But I meant to say, they have got a oh boy, a very strong purchase for what was just a bomb plant. It always happens, it seems, and a lot of Keyside piss around bomb plants. Nade stack towards car. Oh my goodness, so much damage. damage inbound there. That's a nice little setup. Nice gimmick for georgia tech to work off of and not only do they have that nade i thought it was a nade stack but only one was thrown that nade that damage is from one nade that's, unbelievable that's outrageous i like that wad is shooting there with just the glocks they haven't given away the fact that they, they have a forest buy oh yeah and and they've they're just keeping that under wraps here really well done trying to bait georgia tech in towards some unreasonable aggression and it might it might be might be working a little bit here and there but not gonna happen this time <sighs> sneaky but that's a risky move and i think they would only do that versus glocks but greatness is able to best him and that's gun spotted now and it seems like a little bit of worry sets in as well a Decent position towards the pack of new boxes. Hard to clear. Micah swinging through the smoke into everybody. An isolated duel from Jose is able to find one, but not two. Nothing else is given over, and now a retake is inbound here. An attempt in the 3v3. A maneuver with the bomb made, but that allows for a smoke to be faded, and post plants are going to be a little more tricky. Spam through the box, not quite connecting. It's just shots. An inquisitive scout bullets raining through that coffins no one's towards banana that smoke's gonna help out quite a bit in terms of entrance in towards this retake but it's a mp9 long range that just can't get the job done wad position spotted he tries to mask the sound of him dropping with the galil but it doesn't work georgia tech they hold on for another round good retake there from georgia tech good hold by the way b and great nade at the start so everything looking good i don't that got unreasonably close there at the end you know, letting that bomb take a little further than necessary, KNZ, whilst uh, Minus recovered the AK. But either way, 2-0, and, and this is this is fantastic for uh, for Georgia Tech. And oh my goodness, no way they're doing this again. Florida, are you, what are you doing? Wow. I mean, they're trying to keep the gas up huh. here. And uh, I think... That maybe that is a result of them just thinking that they came close two kills in or, or two 
three kills in, in, in that last round are going to allow for a little bit of wiggle room. But if they're just going to rush B, they need something more, but maybe not. Somehow the opening gets made, and now it's a 3v4 in favor of FGCU. Maybe that's all they needed was a little bit of guns to gather this round, and that seems oh. likely now with Triple R finding that frag. This is outrageous. I hate that this is working. I mean, I just yeah, I can't believe it. And and it really is just because it, it catches Georgia Tech off guard. They they don't think there's any way that Florida could be buying again. Not after losing two in a row. But instead they fly up banana. They find the opening duel. You, you saw I don't think that I don't think that Georgia Tech take those those duels where they do if they're playing against what they perceive to be guns. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that, it, it's a brutal round to drop right there. Georgia Tech and a nice answer back from FGCU. Uh, again, it might come down to B-holds. Do they have it in them? That one, yeah. it, it certainly showed signs of, of fear in the long term for Georgia Tech here, but they got to have an answer. They got to lock down these sites in a more convincing fashion. You can't allow for just a straight B side aggression with very little utility, very little weaponry to work that swimmingly for FGCU. Otherwise, you're going to be staring down the barrel of dropping this one in a fashion that is very surprising, very shocking to me. Not big on the MP9s, but there's three of them. Greatness taking massive damage to those HE grenades. Oh, and what a spam through the smoke. Jose down by a lot. As Micah just has a grenade land on his head. He's also down to 55. It's a good look for Florida as they look to push forward in towards the site. Right, it's the first to take the duel. He's going to go down. It's low HP, of course. Molly coming out. Is it a little bit too late? No, it does indeed stall things out by a bit. What? Oh, got to be aware of that if you're Jose. One finds the frag. Spamming through the smoke. Throws it. No frags to his name just yet, but there's his first. And he's got help. The help in the form of Mike who gets stuck on a wall. It's still three versus two, and now Georgia Tech have the advantage. It's so awkward, too. They are struggling to get the bomb down, and now all of the smokes have faded away. They don't have that privilege anymore, and so the reposition from both players, but time starts to tick now. That becomes a factor more so than ever with those smokes faded away. they got to get the numbers punched, and eventually Blue Guzzler making a proactive play towards the side hall, and SWAT is going to take care of Banana as well. 20 seconds, so no time to go back over into the opposite bomb site. Cover being held from Wad. He goes for the peak, and Wad is finding it all here. One more to go right around the corner. K and Z gets flashing out just in time for Wad to reposition. Now position known from K and Z, and this one should be a perfect crossfire from the two remaining FTC members. They're not even required as Wad closes it out with a 4K. Man, big rounds for Florida, and they are showing that they're not here to play. They're here to win, and win. They have done here in the last couple of rounds. Dangerous that last one, as it might have been. It's very solid stuff. AK's bounding now for Florida. It's going to have to be Georgia Tech that concede this economic battle. Especially being on the CT side, you are just not able to do the likes of, of what Florida Gulf Coast did to them. No, somehow... Who's taking two frags there with the B250? I don't understand, but I mean, it's good damage and it's AK retrieved as well. Leaves them into a chance. Micah, especially a prime opportunity with the 5 7 in hand. If the numbers start to get punched in and no one ever clears out apartments, that can get dicey. Another frag in. That's oh. the low HP member down and they've. Delayed the bomb plant just a second longer for the AK to maneuver in. Jose, a real chance. And somehow, this round is going wrong. Glue Glessler stuck between two members. He needs to isolate these fights. No. And Jose threw the smoke. What on earth was that? How did they win a round like that? This man, Jose, having a incredible round. Two frags with the P250. And uh, another on the follow-up with the AK. What great patience from Micah as well to play around him in perfect fashion. 
Georgia Tech, man, this is already showing up to be a really quality game three. Man, Inferno, so strong if you ever get it in a game three. And this is why back and forth, you're early playing for the economic game are these two teams. It really is. And around like that as well, for a CT side winning it, it alleviates oh. a ton of pressure. It gives you so much opportunity, especially on this gun round where it's looking so pretty up in hand. Uh, we got two AKs as well. We talked about how effective those AKs are on the CT side. And so a bit of a brutal one to lose for FGCU. I thought they were starting to gain some control, but... Oh, oh God. It shows otherwise Blue Guzzler hitting some nice shots, but they're all on his team members. So. Oh, a bit premature on that peak, you would say. Well, he is going to get traded, but still. What you'd like to see. Flashbang goes out. There's pushing forward. Not great. Brosis somehow does, it, in fact, find the frag. Push up and, oh my goodness. Wow. Like another great adjustment there from Glue Guzzler. Who finds the kill. This bomb not yet going to be on the side. It's going to push forward. Smoke goes out. Now they sort of have confirmation. HE grenade. Oh, <laughs> it's a touchdown. Three points. Minus looks for a tag through the wall, but that's not going to happen. Unbelievable. Nade right there, but Terry, he's in such a good position on top of the coffins right now. And hey, with an op and being alone, Minus, it's hard clear. And he gets it done. Oh, what a job right there for Minus and Blue Guzzler. The man to save them, to get them this far, needs to close the distance here with two players heading his way. Op's going to be the first man close by. Headshot clothesline in. Now there's one on the site. Taps the bomb, but he knows he's off it. Blue Guzzler playing the jiggles too. Nice attempt, but KNZ is good enough to get the kill and the defuse off. So Georgia Tech will win another round, but that became quite pricey off of Blue Guzzler's heroics. Uh, pricey, sure, but I don't think the price... Okay, I was going to say, I don't think the price matters that much. Little did I know, um, Florida <laughs> are just mad lads. They don't care about saving. They only care about buying. Yes, uh, you know, fair enough. <laughs> they, uh, they took a look at the economy today, and they said, well, you know, it's a buying economy. We're just going to take all of the money we have and throw it into weapons that we can try to afford. Yeah, they do. Not perfect, but it certainly is deadly. And Georgia Tech, they really need to solidify themselves here by winning this round. Exactly right. They're going back to some of the problematic ways they hold banana as well, or lack thereof, rather, as they have currently no control of banana. Luckily for them, that won't matter too much. It seems like the real prong of approach is over towards A with current positioning a wraparound coming through and minus starting to connect some up shots could be very promising for georgia tech the ump isn't good enough from that distance as well to get the job done but the eagle is terror off of the reswing for minus takes down the opping player and makes this defense so much more tricky for the remaining members michael holding things off on the site but now it's close of stalin and pit left to do it all and he's only good for a bit of damage that's it this is scary. Very, very scary for Georgia Tech. Once again, they're between a rock and a hard place. They try to retake. One player in pit. Two players on site. And for a ones for both. They recover this off and just save. That's got to be looking good for now. And Oh, yep, there it is. And he's going to recover that AWP and run the heck for the hills. Good exit frag for Jose. And he's going to get out as well. Georgia Tech, another lost round as Florida's purchasing continues apace. Yeah, it uh, it, it's back and forth this game, and oftentimes that's going to favor the the T side pretty heavily. FGCU it hasn't shown up in the scoreboard just considering the fact that that one eco round, that absurd eco that went through, but at the moment. With that round, the Force by Wars will continue, of course, but if they drop this one, I think they'll finally be forced to wave that white flag and maybe even concede a lead back to FGCU. I think you're right, 100%. Though, actually, considering the, the economy, the money, and everything, Florida might be in the same position. That said, they could always just buy pistol armor, and that's not going to hurt them near as much as it would for Georgia Tech to do the same. So, 
Maybe I speak too soon. Either way. Lots of banana control being gained for now. And it looks to me like that might be where most of these players are hiding. Another phenomenal timing. That grenade doing big damage to greatness in triple R. Consistent with the util damage is so, so promising. And now execute once again. Seems likely towards B. They're going back to this B bomb site. But luckily this time, you know, it is a more passive approach. But they got utility and they've got a third man close by. Great flashbang forces glue guzzler off. And I think he was setting himself up a nice bit of nades here. That one, I believe, going to land. In their back line is where it's going to land. <laughs> oh no, triple R. Oh, okay, so all the nades thrown over the glue guzzler after that sort of approach is kind of mind-boggling. But either way, he throws the rest of them. He gets the rest down range here. His greatness is going to bite the bullet. It's a shot from the oh, side. There's no. no CT smoke. There's trades back from Terror. And yeah, Terror, you get that CT smoke down now. But don't you think that was a little bit too late? Definitely. Especially with 10 seconds left. He's got to he's gotta commit. Or, or lose. I mean, he loses. You just can't find all these players. Not yet. Not anymore. And it's going to be the frag and the recovery of a knob. Yes. And Z picks that up. And this is what really turned the tide, man. Really nice shots from Jose. Spray transfer with the FAMAS. Well done. Georgia Tech. Have they finally won it? It looks like they have. Florida has finally given it up it's only taken like three no two times for georgia tech to win two in a row and they finally oh, yeah. have given this up they still four spot three players nearly down oh like, you're below right 500 what is <laughs> oh my goodness sorry so not a full concession here it's, uh, it's good damage with the mp9 if the back and forth continues, then this game is a real good decider. It's shaping up to be, and Jose to kick things off. It looks like finally they might submit themselves a start, but they've committed three towards Banana still, and as you can see, they're going to dive out of apartments, leaving it all in the back of Bros of Stalin. Only one man to save the day, Oné. Surely not. Surely not again. Did oh, I boy. say that, though? Spotted out. Two players now on the site. Bros is in help. Frag comes in. Oh, and they're both going to be going down. It was one for one trade, though, so it's still a man advantage for the retake. But the bomb. The bomb. That HG grenade. It does oh. so much damage. And KNZ might find the timing through this smoke. Gonna find the timing, but does find the push. That's one out. Gets that frag. He's not going to be ready for the second one, but he actually does uh, got help with Jose and the turnaround and there, everything else. Finally, Georgia Tech. Oh, they've done it. But the plant comes down, then you know what that means. <laughs> oh, I mean, if I see another force by, I might just lose my mind here. Uh, yeah. Dude, it's like I'm watching G2. For, or, or, or no, it's, it was it was Envy back in the Envy, yeah back in the, like 2015. Oh, Ugh. what's going on here? Stop, stop with the buying. Okay, uh, okay, they've left themselves a bit of wiggle Good. room here. I think they're on like 3,400 or at least 2,900. They're three three round loss bonus now. So okay, so, so with 2, the plan, 900 scattered. Yes. So good news, they're gonna have a buy next round, regardless of plan. Jesus, oh, it'll be the first full buy of the game in round 10. Or actually, round 11. Oh, my God. First full gun round, baby. And it came a little bit late, but we'll be guaranteed it in the next round. Yes. I say that, but what if Georgia Tech... No, goes? don't stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. Oh, boy. Alrighty. A execute seems likely here. Bros of Stalin, once again, an anchor on this position. No! Once out of apartments. <laughs> this is becoming a bit no! disastrous. Two <laughs> entries in. Oh no, what is going on here? You've done them. You've done them with the <laughs> caster's curse, haven't you? Oh, this is what's happened. It's going to be a save. Georgia oh. Tech going down.
And Florida winning on a half by eco, whatever it is. Oh my goodness. <sighs> All right. Take a deep breath here. I mean, let's talk numbers. We got K and Z. 3300, yeah. same case for minus. So, two weapons can be dropped over. At least minus can buy up his own weapon. Rain so, is hunting though. Okay. Good, good. We need we need Jose to stay alive. He cannot be going down. Otherwise, we won't get that full buy. But I think we're still okay. I think we're still in the clear. Let's take a look at what they're going to gather here. Yeah. Four dropped over to Brosif. Minus can buy up his own. We got ourselves the first gun round here. Oh, let's go. We made it. Oh, full 11 rounds in. But we <laughs> are here, baby. And there's even an op. On greatness, this is fantastic. Finally, it feels good to get here, and I'm sure it feels good for FGCU after a round like that. One to break the backs of Georgia Tech, if they can get there. Interesting to see what, what greatness is going to do with this up. If he's going to go for a more passive approach, if he's going to go on the aggressive, try and get some nice ground gain. But right now, it's a very good early map control, but the retake utility... It's good as well. They're going to gather up banana in the early round. Well, now it's time to put some or apply some pressure. Oh, odd finding. Was that KNZ through the smoke? Yeah, it was. Big victory. Ryan is on the site. It's set up there. Brosif in position. He's got a double. And that's a good trade there for Minus. So Brosif does go down. AWP coming in. He's tagged and bagged. Micah. Closing that out, triple R1B3. Needs a triple. And he won't get it. Mike could have taken care of him. And so it's an answer right back for FGCU after an eco round victory. And uh, that, that, again, puts him in a position where they might force by. And knowing their pass, they just uh, likely will. So I'm still waiting on their decision here. They're surely not going to stick to Glocks. And there it goes. A little bit of investment. It's very similar to the round that they won previously but i'll see if they can replicate that result that's going to be their goal so by now georgia tech surely are expecting a buy every round <laughs> and it's going to be the b attack second molly goes down making life hard and all oh, the he is fantastic this is beautiful stuff he does in fact find the frag this greatness but it's the only frag and like I said, Georgia Tech, they are finally expecting it. Great, great, great adjustment there from Georgia Tech. B rushes kind of have been more of a worrying factor here for Georgia Tech. Even on overpass, it was kind of problematic. And on Inferno, a couple of B rush rounds have worked for FGCU, but this wasn't one of them. Instead, they play more passive. They get information and then they throw their utility. They don't throw it at the start of the round where you know it has a chance to totally whiff. They wait until they know exactly where you are before they throw those HEs, before they throw those mollies. And that did the trick. That was a great uh, reposition, re, uh, re look at how they worked that banana control. Definitely. Bears it. Hold my flash. He says to the player on site. And he's going to say, can you flash me in, though? Yeah, I think that's exactly what's going on. <laughs> Big call. And, oh, that reposition Ooh. might be costing KNZ, but no, he wins the duel. Greatness going down. Oh, bro, this is so very low, but he's still got the frag. The follow-up flash is fantastic, but a missed shot from Minus. Allows for Triple R to start equalization. HE grenade gonna miss its mark. It's a push in towards DT Swan. I could kind of sniff that out. Push in towards on towards the A site is good. Versus is still in the back. Oh, and he finds the frag. That's disgusting. He's in fact looking for the follow up. This is really good work from Brosif to stall things out. Gonna be able to find enough. No, Brosif. He's gone down. It's two versus two. He sure was close of stalling right there for quite some time. Two players in apartments at the moment and a chance with the spray down, not connecting. Now Wad, 16 HP to his name. He needs to pull it off from Coldbox here. They're working their way into it, but the good trades, good spacing.
comes through and Jose's quick with the trade to and, close it out. And good, just uh, impressive pre-fires there too, mm -hmm. right? The the quick, uh, you know, thought process to say, okay, he, he's down now. I just need to pre-fire because obviously they they got the information that he was low HP. So yeah, Georgia Tech. I, you know, this has been a crazy half, no doubt about it. But they have they have continually kept themselves in it with smart economic decisions, and now they're poised to win the half. Yeah, it, it's looking likely that they can uh, grab a couple extra rounds as well. What I is mean, this buy? I don't know. I, I truly have no idea what is going on with all these force buys. I mean, I, I cannot keep up with uh, FGC. I mean, these bikes have worked out with little success but i mean take a look at the results so far yeah. if you just work the numbers you'd know that you know you've lost about three or four four spies you, you won one yes it was a good one but you continue to go with it and it's just not working out it seems well and, and i also don't understand the half investment here you're gonna go for it I'll right. go the whole darn way like 100%. glue guzzler and triple r are are just kind of halfway invested here we go. Fantastic flashbang. It's only going to be good for two. That said, still plenty of time on the site. Good adjustment there from KNT. Can you find the third? Not quite, but it is just Wad on the site. One on three. Has the bomb, but yeah, th this just makes no sense. And well, I, I don't know what thought. I, I just really wish I knew the thought process, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're not going to win it, you needed a bomb plant right there. Watt had an opportunity, and he doesn't get it down. So you're going to see, like you mentioned, that disjointed buy for the yeah, closing. 2,900, 3,400. I mean, hair doesn't have money. Like, uh, so very odd to me. Yeah, same here. I mean, and Wad could have really bailed him out of this rough situation with a bomb plant. I, I had plenty. I granted, I will say, I've got extra. I know exactly where everyone is. He does not, but. Oof, it's FTCU start this half off really poorly, and I think they only have themselves to blame with how they work the economy. It was it was interesting at first, and then it, it continued to spiral. I think. Well, mm -hmm. and we'll see how far it spirals here. It looks looks like it might be far, but it's good trading happening there, especially by Glue Guzzler. Two on three, Georgia Tech. Are now equalized to two v two. Workable here, and a missed mode of smoke opens up a big opportunity. This is one of the strongest reasons why this A bomb site so hard to retake is the mode of smokes. And right there, you can see that that one being missed opens up a lot for the opera of Mika. He's going to pick himself up an AUG instead to work in. But there's two players holding this angle. A peek through. He can't find the first. And now they're going to double down. Triple R helps his teammate by dropping. Brother Wad does. But Triple R to find the finishing frag. There's 10-5 half. A nice little bit of wiggle room for FGCU. But they're going to need a strong CT side if they want to give themselves a chance. Look yeah, at the scoreline. Well, oh, in all honesty, kills. CT sides have really not been FGCU's strong suit. Um, Not at all. I mean, we've seen some weaknesses from Georgia Tech CT, but you think back, right? It was uh, it was the CT side that Georgia Tech kind of ran away with on 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 Vertigo, and then it was the T side that Florida really were impressive on mm -hmm. on Overpass. So you know we're they haven't had an opportunity really to show off that much on their on their ct side but it wasn't great on overpass it was uh, you know non-existent on on vertigo for <laughs> obvious reasons because of a 12 3 half and now it's they're kind of poised to be in a similar position at the 10 5. yeah you're exactly right it it did seem to be a little bit lacking 9 6 half uh, in favor of georgia tech's t side on overpass was uh, a big troubling factor here as we head into inferno we'll see if they can get Maybe it a bit cleaned up. If they continue their economic you know, troubles, if they continue and going for risky forces, I don't think that'll be the case. And a fast A set approach here is going to be met with three defenders. That it is. 
They're trying to hit those shots. Not going to connect. It's a low HP. Triple R trying the same. He's one and done. It's going to be all on these Zulies. Oh, boy. Quad. One on three. All three players. Okay, two players on site. That's the first. He takes down one. And there's one close by. Low HP goes towards the headshot box. And Wadi's very careful. 21 kills to his name. That was all done in one half here. Looking to make it more. But cannot minus. Will find the finishing blow with the USB. And grab himself some duelies as his reward. Yeah, there's duelies. I, I don't know. I feel like they're hit or miss. But... Definitely is interesting to, to watch. You know, it's a pistol equivalent of the bullet hose. And, you know, 11 to 5 now. Already in position. And look, Florida, I think they may have learned a little bit from their mistakes. The other thing to note, of course, is uh, T-Side very forgiving. CT side not so much when it comes down to your economic decisions. And so for those two reasons combined, I would imagine... Let you see you go for the save. Wise. Wise. But it's still going to leave them a little bit of a rough situation. Here's it's going to be three players stacked over. I like the stack that we've got over towards A, and it might actually work out here. You've got a boost towards cold. I've never seen this before. I've seen it once or twice. Definitely can be effective. That's a good nade. What happened to that nade? I don't know. It should have done more damage by the by the look of it, but unfortunately, Glue Glazor is dispatched. It's again, a good stack. Good for one. In fact, he gets a second, but seemingly like going to be it. All things considered, a little bit of damage done, but not much more than you know the standard. Destroys attacker at twelve. And I mean, honestly. That's another one of those rounds where two kills in and it was nearly a third. Is uh, it, It's workable with their investment here. Mm -hmm. They did change their approach. You can see that they have actually got weapons in this round. Now, they're certainly lacking in terms of the head Kevlar and in terms of the kits. Only one in the hands of Triple R. He had to invest into that and he gets no utility as a result. But, I mean, I feel like this round almost a necessity in terms of the conversion for FGCU if they ever want to build up any sort of momentum. I, I'm fully on board there with you. If Georgia Tech can take this one, I think they, they really will solidify themselves into a very good chance to win this out. That being said, see some smokes getting lined up. It's going to go left side of mid. Three players with banana control. Some pre-firing and the such. To me, is it B might be the actual final destination here based on the rotations. It's just going to be a full execution with smokes and grenades. There they are. Goes out. The guzzler. And around the corner. Taking that frag. It's triple R with one of his own. Flashbang allows for him. But yeah, that's a fantastic boost. Double kill off the back of said boost. He's a one versus three for Bruce. And does enough to avoid the bomb plant here. Rosef Stalin never punches in the numbers. and never finds another kill in the round either. As FGCU, they convert in a much-needed fashion, denying the bomb plant as well. It's going to put Georgia Tech in a standing where they could get into the trap of going for the four spice here. But I think they're a little bit wiser than that. And they will avoid it. Give them a save, especially with the lead. You can play a little more conservative if you're the T side. Yeah, there, there is no reason. Zero reason to force fight for Georgia Tech here, um, and and I love that they've they've elected to just play it passively, not not get too far ahead of themselves, and just take a, a fast and loose approach. Speaking of fast, it's a fast push up towards mid. Two players going down. It's kill there by minus, but that's the only kill will be found. Quick and easy for Florida Gulf Coast. Well done, well done. Four. Alive as well. Building up that CT side economy. We're going to talk about it every chance we get because it's one of the win conditions here for FGCU in terms of pulling off this comeback. Need to continue to string rounds together, though. That's going to be key as well. And the weapons are out once again. Certainly limited. You got a 
lot of struggling players to gather utility, even a Galil for KNZ. So it's not going to be the best of buys here to work with, but if they can maybe find an opening frag or two, I'll alleviate some of that pressure. And that's exactly what Jose is trying to do here. Pretty early banana control. I like that a lot. We see Florida sort of playing the same sort of passive positioning that Georgia Tech were on their defense. They throw the early grenades. They they try to take some passive control, and then they force their opponents to take further control elsewhere. Rosev, opening shots, connecting. Name a more iconic duo: Bruce and Stalin and opening frags. Hard to do, and a harder position to do it as well. Here, CT smoke, I believe, hasn't connected, but that's not gonna be a problem. Okay, disconnect triple R on top of the oranges here is good for a couple of kills, but he needed to find a whole lot more, unfortunately, in his position, and it just wasn't possible. It wasn't a realistic expectation, and so now Terror maybe he holds on to this A1S. I feel like that's the best case scenario, but he's not even going to be able to run away at this point. He's made his presence known with that flashbang, and he's going to commit. He's half HP, and there's just no chance. If you could have ran away, maybe there's a chance to save, but and and get another buy and Look what they're going to get here, and I'm almost guaranteeing that FGCU go for another force buy in this position. Yeah, it, they, they probably feel as if they have to as well, considering the additional money that they had. Rain is going to pick up an op. And I mean, this is not a horrible buy. I mean, it's not great, but it's also not terrible. So you got three three total rifles from Austin and Porn at AWP to go along with a relatively respectable amount of utility. Early shot misses its mark, Ooh. though, and greatness goes down very low due to the Molotov. I like that. I like though that FGCU they're getting cheekier and cheekier here as, as they go down lower and lower they're trying more and more things to try and get those small advantages yeah right there with you it's almost required especially when you have a couple of players with famosas scully or rather famosas and p9s and eagles it's important that your ops and m4s are going for aggressive maneuvers to try and manufacture openings to alleviate some of that pressure on the lacking weaponry so the fact that they're going for that promising but it's come at a cost ops down low a couple of low HP bars on the other side of things gives them an opportunity as the execute towards A rolls on off. This is a good crossfire. First frag going the way, maybe making two, three even. The quad total here for of GCU. Player still on site and he can't connect either. Georgia Tech's push falls apart. Florida Gulf Ghost. They make it work on the force. Yeah, just a massive overperformance from Wad and Terra as they both find kills or two kills rather. I feel like in a uh, in a position that, that they were in with MP9 and Deagle, realistically at the very best you're talking two one for ones. The fact that they each grab two kills is unbelievable, and Wad is just continuing to attempt to pull FGCU across this finish line. He has been uh, an angel on Inferno. Yep. But, that said, Georgia Tech laying the devil on his shoulder. Push for it. Very big whiff spray there with Terror. Wad, no connecting. His shot, as per usual. Oh, boy. Is it happening again? It might be. On? Triple R with the only frag there on the retake. Three versus two. Looking good. All about timing for the retake here he's got a full nade set but he doesn't throw a single grenade no. that uh, there's no words about it i i can't even comprehend how fgc you lose around like that with sprays lacking of head kevlar there's so much that has gone wrong they're not using your utility it's a smoke two flashes and a molly you have to throw <sighs> a little bit of that a, a little bit it. of that that is uh, I don't even want to do the math. What is that? 1300 down the drain for nothing? So much money. Well, and and listen, listen, not to get too deep, but that, that smoke covers off the, the pit guy. You know there's a guy there. That molly, it goes over the top. It's a really easy throw, and it clears out the backside. Like, oh. And then the flash obviously allows you entry. It's just so... It's so obvious, I want to say, that, that 
the fact that it's missed is is really egregious. Yeah, it's it's not good. It's not good signs here. Spram rolling on off. That's a freebie for Wad. He is once again the consistent factor for FGCU, but I just simply put, it's not enough that he's stepping up to the plate. It has to be a team effort here, as we're seeing coming through from Georgia Tech on the entrance. It's going to be two entry kills from Minus and Micah to submit this one. And I imagine that considering that, oh. well, they had two rifles, they no longer have that. 25 kills for Wad. Can't make it 26 as he goes down there. Match point, and it's more force spice inbound as well for FGCU. Yeah, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say this is it because obviously we don't know, but it feels to me like there might be a mental factor here for Florida, where you know we're late in the day. I mean, it's, it's you know it's getting late here at night, especially on the East Coast, as I'm sure you know, everybody here for Florida is. Um, and on top of that. You know, we're in map map three of a pretty darn grueling series, might I add. That's a great start. Minus. Finding the frag. I'm not quite sure what the plan was there, but it certainly didn't work. Running through the fire in the flames. Florida Gold Coast already down by two. Terror takes that off of one. That's an AK retrieved. Workable position now. There needs to find a couple more, though. And, well, he goes down. That pretty much cements it. A bomb site now becomes compromised, and the rotates are cut off from Micah's positioning. That's library. Comes through. And uh, it's just going to be the closer. Micah, he finishes things off. Georgia Tech take 16-8 to over Florida Gulf Coast. And three maps granted. But, again, the maps that they won were so very convincing. I mean, I guess the same case can be said for Florida Golf Coast and Overpass, considering their strong T side. But it's an interesting series that we just saw there in terms of not, not a lot of back and forth in their maps. Yeah, I, I think that that's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I also think that, yeah, like I was sort of guesstimating there at the end, um, you know, Florida really were – struggling with decision making i think in that last map um again the reason that you and i were so flabbergasted by the purchasing decisions is because they were not making such odd decisions in any of the other maps mm -hmm. it was actually quite solid sure they were aggressive with force buys we talked about it at the time but there's aggression and then there's whatever that was <laughs> you know yeah. like, like there's two different things isn't it yeah, no, it did seem like they got caught in that trap that oftentimes T-sides can get caught, and you oftentimes will lack the op for greatness. That was the case there as well. Mm -hmm. We saw him very limited in his chances to get that. You'll lack utility once you do eventually get those buy rounds, and uh, a utility on Inferno is, is one of the most important things if you consider how you need to get map control, and uh, yeah, th that was just a consistent issue overall for Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, and we are, by the way, going to be getting an interview soon with uh, Georgia Tech's own Corrosive Stalin. So as soon as we get that ready, we'll we'll bring that in. But yeah, I, you know, multiple things certainly coming to fruition. I will say um, props to Florida Gulf Coast, I think, for picking up a map there. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. they're, they are going down to that 3-3 three and three record. It's Georgia Tech to move on to 5-1. and one. Um, So two... Uh, uh, Two, both of our series today, you know, ending in that outcome where the uh, the winning team continuing to pull out victories. And it's also um, two teams that that were are kind of second or third in their uh, in their subsequent mm -hmm. division. So I'm interested to see kind of how that, you know, hands out as we continue forward in uh, in, in with the, the rest of the season. But, you know, final thoughts here. What, what do you think really put Georgia Tech over the edge um, in, in that final map, other than some, some of those key misses on economy and the such that, that we saw from Florida? I did like the adjustments that were, were made on the CT side specifically. I think that they did a great job of, you know, at a certain point, it did look like, the, once again, their B was going to become an issue. The B players, they adjusted nicely. I, I liked what I saw in terms of how they played you know, some, some aggressive approaches. They stacked over three players at the starts of rounds to try and gather control. And once those tech nines were coming out as well, they made sure to change the way they threw the threw the utility because those were rather problematic as well. But oftentimes, you know, it does come down to 
winning a couple of clutches and i feel like maybe a florida golf coast could have cleaned up uh, a little bit of those or i mean i'm sorry georgia tech if they could have cleaned up a little bit of those on overpass in their second half that that might have been a 2-0 that we kind of all expected yeah i i think you're absolutely right those those 1v1s especially mm -hmm. oh man over on overpass they, they really did um you know kind of allow for florida to get back into a game that they might have been out of at that time but um mm -hmm. you know talking positives on the florida side of things um individuals playing well um wad we saw on that last map i mean really doing a fantastic job we saw greatness getting involved doing a uh, a really good uh good job over there um and then tear uh we, you know over on overpass in particular i think mm -hmm. stepped up pretty big so um everybody kind of having a moment or two to to show off i bit i was very impressed with that as well um because hey like you never you never know who's who's popping off who's not and in florida um they've had a couple of rough of uh, rough goes at it on stream especially it was really brilliant to, get to see some of those big those players pop off for for them and uh and also find some victories in the uh the two of one but with that said we are ready to get towards our interview it is going to be brosive stalin coming in hey guys how uh, you doing okay. howdy brosive well i i just initially have to ask how does it feel coming off that grueling three map series it feels good we were uh we were having a little uh little shakiness after the second map but <laughs> we brought it back after the third and so uh glad we clutched up and, and now we're here well i definitely did let me just since you went there let me go there immediately what the heck okay. happened over on overpass we uh we had a few a few util mishaps we had a few uh accidental things go on also we got other two teammates micah and and logan in here right now Min minus oh, awesome. so uh, let's go back to the back to the overpass game. yeah we had we had a few util mishaps we had a few a uh, few accidents that kind of gave them a lot of access to b and then because our setups weren't as secure as we were hoping it kind of kind of made the rush really easy and then they just kind of abused that and uh yeah that, that, that's about all i gotta say for that yeah, I mean, uh, long term, like in Overpass, were the couple of clutches that they were able to gather the one v ones towards the tail end. Were those kind of getting in your all's heads? Uh, a little bit. We it was it was refreshing, kind of, you know, that uh, we had a third map just in case. But mm -hmm. yeah, we uh, it definitely the comms definitely went down a little bit after after that second half. Yeah. So you get a little graveyard comms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a well, little bit of. Uh... <laughs> Speaking of those comms. How um who who was it and and how did you guys reset going into Inferno? It was clear that there was definitely a discussion. Um, everybody felt very much upbeat in comparison. You really walked away with uh with with Inferno. So who who and how did you guys adjust? Well, we all just kind of took a break. You know, went to the bathroom, got some water, just uh kind of took it out of our mind for the for the break period. And then when we came back, I mean, we had been prepping Inferno for a little bit, so we we kind of knew in the back of our mind, like we had the setups, we had these setups, we had these drills, we had these executes. We kind of knew vaguely what we were supposed to be doing, and I think just being a little more comfortable on the map kind of let us let us get into the groove and into our like safe zone to really uh, win the fights and get the one v ones on our side this time. So, because the first few first few rounds were definitely down to the last person on each team. So once we got past that, we kind of just started rolling, and then. Uh, yeah. Well, with, with that, I want to talk about your division here, Southeast Division. Um, a tough one, honestly. You guys got UCF, um, you got uh, Illinois, uh, the Redbirds, both of those very strong teams with very strong players. Um, coming into uh, into today, obviously you were a bit favored against the FGCU, but going forward, uh, how do you guys plan to deal with heavy hitters like those two teams in your division? Yeah, uh, definitely a lot more practicing, a lot more playing together, just getting team chemistry up. Um, we, I know that the some of the harder ones, or we started off with a pretty hard match in the beginning, mm. but uh, mm -hmm. I know we're going to be ending with with some of the most, uh, or I guess higher ranked opponents. So it's definitely going to be a lot more practice, but 
it's uh, it's good that they're towards the end for us because it gives us a lot more time to practice and, and play together and prepare. Well, uh, absolutely good luck to uh, you all with you. that. Um, any final uh, people you want to shout out, say hello to before we let you go? <laughs> uh, sure. I'll start. Uh, hey, Michael, Reese, Chris. Hey, Sam. Hey, everybody watching. Uh, Vika, Logan, you guys going to shout anybody out? <laughs> hey, Wen. Hey, Aru. Hey, Joseph. Uh, what's up, guys? Thanks for uh, spamming Twitch chat. <laughs> I just really want to shout out our coach, KNZ, doing a great job this season, putting all the strats together. And uh, thank you for the Coke sponsorship, too, KNZ. All right. Yeah, exactly. Well, with that, uh, we w just want to say thanks again for coming on. And uh, you guys, uh, congratulations on your win. Uh, have a great rest Thank of you all's evening. Thank you. You too. All righty. And with that, Cole, it is about that time. Oh, uh, you know, I was glad to get Brosev on there. He, he had yeah. a lot of good insight um, and everything to talk about but we are just about headed towards the end of our day but first i want to take a look uh, and remind everybody what may star league has on offer here on stream it's not just all about counter-strike though i will forgive you if that's all you care about uh we have <laughs> rocket league and overwatch on monday uh, a fantastic duo of games that you don't want to miss league of legends to follow on tuesday and call of duty a couple of fantastic casters that i know and love doing that as well so don't want to don't want to miss that one at 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific if you want to take a peek at any day pretty much any day of the week um to take a look with that being said cool any uh any final thoughts before we uh get the heck out of here uh, i'm just glad to see some new maps here vertigo was quite a pleasure to cast we're just hoping for some new ancient and uh you know, some more variety here coming soon. Heck yeah, ready to see it. Well, with that, it's going to be it from us. I have myself and Cole, the whole production team, um, and everyone watching. Hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you here next week with more Mace Star League action.